no storm, nothing at all, but just one lightning bolt came down and hit the center spire on top of the uh, Amazing Billiards uh, Tower here in Malden, Mass. And it just uh, turned off the stream for a quick second, so apologies about that. But hey, we cannot control an act of God or the powers that be. All right, Jonas, we're going to steal this game. Gets himself at eight now. Nine, eight. Still in favor of Billy Thorpe. I'm going to make a prediction here, folks. Jonas comes with a really strong rack here and gets himself 10-9 ahead. He's going to win this game and the next. Gets himself 10-9 ahead. That's my prediction. Here we go. Jonas breaking rack number 18. You see him controlling that break very, very well. Still looking pretty strong here. You know, you can kind of just read. You can kind of just read the uh, body language from the players as they approach the table and see what's in front of them and what, what the task at hand is. And I kind of just sense something in Jonas where he's like, you know what, I'm, do I'm done messing around, guys. And he gets to eight, and I just kind of feel like he's he's going to come with some some really strong pool right now, and uh, and he's going to go ahead and take the lead. I just kind of feel that way. Welcome, Sophia Mast. Welcome, Joe Rocchio. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Steve Medeiros, Ryan McCreesh, thank you boys and girls for joining. Don't forget to hit that share button. Let everybody enjoy these awesome matches. If you're just joining us, you're watching the hot seat match at the McDermott Classic between Billy Thorpe and Jonas Sudo. This is a race to 11. And these are the last two undefeated players in the event. And I am your voice for the weekend, Mr. Mike DeMarco from Ship the... And this is the event that you're watching right here, the McDermott Classic. There was a three-cushion event that took place the same weekend right here at Amazing Billiards. There are three-cushion tables here. Now, I'm not sure on who actually won that event, to be honest, but I did get to see some of our uh, top players, uh, Billy Thorpe and Sky Woodward, playing some three-cushion uh, Friday night and last night as well. And don't forget, if you are able to donate, we got some awesome prizes to give away. And we're going to do those drawings on Tuesday night. So make sure you guys join us and help support free pro pool. And Jonas with a little bit of misfortune there. I still think that he's going to manufacture something here. You can see him with the shoulder drop. He's like, come on, just give me an open shot. I want to run. 
And there it is, Lucas Ricasso Werner defeats Oscar Dominguez nine games to six. I'm sure you guys could hear the applause in the background. But congratulations to Lucas. All right, so Jonas decides to push out. Billy looking to maintain his dominance here. Firing that ball in. Great speed there. Yeah, it's okay, folks. It's okay. You can congratulate the mans. The Connecticut kid, Mr. Lucas Ricasso Werner. Going super deep right now. So congratulations to Lucas on his latest win, 9-6 over Oscar Dominguez. That's going to put him in a position to play Raymond Linares, a Florida player who has had a great event thus far. And uh, I'll tell you, for, for Raymond's sake, I hope he's prepared as Lucas is playing really strong at this point in the tournament. Billy Thorpe getting jacked up over the seven ball. That's going to impede his stroke just a bit. Just a bit. And he's really not going to be happy about this. He may, if he doesn't like making this shot here, if he's not 100% confident, he may just punt that ball up to the top rail and try to get that cue ball right behind the nine. That's an option. I don't know if that's what he's going to go with, but he's definitely not just getting down and shooting. He's not 100% with it just yet. <laughs> if you see from this vantage point here, he's really close to that seven. A couple inches either side, and he would have been a lot more confident in shooting the six, but... A player of Billy's caliber, he's totally capable of making this here. Wow, how about that for execution, folks? Thank you guys for joining us again. That share button. Billy Thorpe going to go up 10 to 9 here. That puts him on the hill. All right, so folks, we've had a pretty good battle thus far. Neither player really uh, saying that they're they're dominating the match. Can't really say that. What we can say is that Jonas needs an opportunity because Billy's at the table and on the hill. If he comes with a break and run here, that's it. And we're going to move on from this match here. Was playing some defense here. Oh, Billy narrowly 
avoiding pocketing the one ball. And Jonas has got to be sick right there. A good roll turned into a bad roll. Turned into your only opportunity. Just come with it. Pretty close here. See if he can make it happen. Kicking for his life. Don't do it to him. Living on the edge. And Jonas says, how about that? Take that, buddy. You thought you were going to get away with it, huh? <laughs> really answers here. And Jonas really needs to take care of this particular situation. There's just not much room for error. And there's not much time left in this event. And he says, hey, how about just a triple combo, bud? How about that? Now, at first glance, it looks like that was a miss, which it was. But I, I almost feel like Jonas was really just playing safe there. You know, I, I feel like there was a little bit of anxiety there, a little anxious to just get that shot down and done. But he managed the cue ball well. He's got that nice cluster right in front of that one ball. See if Billy can come with it here. He does. <laughs> John Askew. Totally agree with the notion. He says typical rack when you need only when you only need one more. Yeah. Totally. I mean, come on guys, don't you want to see Jonas win this rack and just so we can have that Hill Hill thriller rack? I mean, don't you want that? I think we all do. Walter Palomino, thanks for joining. Nice to see you yesterday. Billy in position here. <laughs> Corey says, yes, we do want to see that Hill Hill. Chris Vick says, no. Jack Taransky wants to see Jonas win it all. I mean, the best rack, in my opinion, is always the double hill. And it's not just because you get maximum, because that's a part of it. That's a part of it. Getting the most out of the rack is definitely, or the most out of the uh, match is definitely uh, part of that. But uh, another piece of that is that both players have to shoot their absolute best effort because there is no game to come back. You know, like you kind of show your true, uh, you know, your, your insides. You show your guts when, when you're sitting on, on you know, hi, I'm, I'm on 10 and my opponent's on 6. You got a little bit of gap there to, to fall back on and you can you can use that as a confidence cushion but 
if both players are on the hill, there is no tomorrow. You have to come with it right now. And you show your true game. You show your insides, show your guts. And that's why that's my favorite. You know, I want to see the the battle where it's all on there. Is somebody going to dog it? Or are they going to, you know, bear down and come with it? Imagine he missed that and kicked the nine ball in. What do you think Jonas would have done there? <laughs> Lock the windows. <laughs> Jonas with another opportunity here to get us into that position and get us to a double hill. Yeah, that's right, Corey, to the death. That's right. That's uh, that's really the the best type of situation. You know, both players are fighting for their life right now. Nice controlled shot there. Needs one more of those top quality shots. And uh, we will get our double hill. Well, both of these players are definitely showing why they've arrived at the hot seat. They're both playing very top quality pool. Jonas just verifying his thoughts here. But, I mean, both players are, are quite deserving of this type of uh, situation. And Jonas takes all that time to double-check his work, and he rushes to get down on the final four balls. Billy Thorpe now with the advantage in the open shot. see Let's see what Billy can come up with here around the world one two doesn't want to end on the rail he's got a little bit of space here so one really good shot here and that's going to seal the deal for Billy Thorpe it. How's the speed? That's going to win him this set. That's going to win him this set right here. All right. Jonas is going to give it to him. Congratulations. Billy Thorpe on the win. In our hot seat match, last undefeated player, Mr. Billy Thorpe, cannot be beaten this weekend. And he is thrilled. You can see that expression on his face. Smiling from ear to ear. Really happy for him. And he's going to go take a little bit of rest and prepare. All right, so we're going to take a quick minute and listen to uh, we're going to listen to a quick uh, intermission with the owner here, Mr. Mason Shuni, and also uh, I believe he's here with uh, what looks to be the owner of McDermott Cues uh, to just say a few words at the McDermott Classic. So. Uh, stand by for that. We're going to have that for you in just a minute. And I will be back with your next feature match. Don't go too far.
speakers from all the countries, some from uh, Europe, some of the best players in the world. Uh, thank you to our big sponsor, Greg Knight, the seven tier, the owner of the German. Big round of applause, thank you. Uh, I want to give a super thank you, really big thank you for uh, the hard work that uh, both powers put into this event. That was, uh, that was, uh, it was really three months of non-stop working with uh, so many people involved. Uh, and really, this is our first one. It's going to get better and bigger. Uh, I want to thank all the sponsors, all the sponsors that are involved, the next one as well. Um, Thank all my staff here that worked really hard for the last three, four days here, cleaning up after all of you uh, messy people. Uh, but but it worked out really great. Really love to have you guys in here. Hopefully we'll make it bigger and better next year. And I hope you guys enjoyed it here. Uh, and if uh, anything that we can make it better, any feedback, feel free to contact us and keep in touch. And thank you all. Really thank you for coming. Appreciate it. All right, that was your room owner, Mr. Mason Shuni. Just wanted to get out there, say a few words. And again, we will have another feature match for you momentarily. So please stand by for your next feature match.
right, ladies and gents, I know you've been anxiously awaiting something to listen to. And lo and behold, here it is, me. <laughs> so I am back. Uh, a couple of things going on around the room, and at times I need to step away. As I'm sure you guys understand, Bobby Hooker knew it. He knew it. <laughs> Mr. Bazinet says, Dad? Dad, is that you? Are you back? Really you? Well, I'm glad you guys and gals are still hanging tight, checking out the action here. And boy, oh boy, we still got some good tournament action for you. We've got Lucas Fracasso versus, <laughs> that was for you, uh, Ashley and Jared. I forget what I actually said the last time, but uh, Raymond Linares and Lucas Fracasso Werner battling, trying to continue their tournament life. Both players having a stellar event thus far. And uh, I'll tell you, we've got some some really talented individuals battling their way through this crazy field to arrive at our final group. And just a heads up, we've got Skylar Woodward waiting. Moritz Newhausen waiting. Uh, the winners of the Shane Wolford, Sullivan, Clark and the match that you guys are watching here. Uh, so So the winner of Shane Wolford and Sullivan Clark will play Skylar Woodward. And the winner from this match that you're watching here will play Moritz Newhausen. And still a few rounds to go. Here we go. For Casso Werner to break. And this is rack number three. He's up two to zero. And we are racing to nine.
right, folks, I am back with you, and my absence was due to the addition of our shot clock here. You can see that at the center on the bottom of your screen there. I wanted to make sure you guys were able to see that. I've been looking for the bank shot does not happen. Bo's over here doing a running around like a madman. All right, so, yeah, so the the shot clock was advertised as it would be implemented at this point in the event, and there is uh, officials that are controlling the shot clock, and as well, you can hear the audible sounds uh, letting the players know when their time is coming due. Yeah, that's uh, that's been the case uh, for this, and this has actually been uh, the uh, the first time that we've been able to see that uh, involved with the digital pool setup. That is part of the system, which is great. And uh, folks, if you're not on board with digital pool, what are you guys waiting for? I mean, it's the future of pool. It really is. I mean, there's, there's no question about it that digital pool is the future of pool. And if you don't think that you're not looking hard enough, you need to get yourself educated and understand what digital pool is and why a guy like me is telling you that it is the future of pool. It is really the only way to go. Will Ailey in the chat rooting on Lucas for Casso Werner. He says, you got this. And he's correct. All of Connecticut, I'm sure, is very proud of this young man and where he's made it to and how well he's performing. And I'm sure he's going to continue to just get better and better, stronger and stronger. He had a tough match earlier, uh, lost to Billy Thorpe, and that was really his only loss um, in the event. <laughs> Ray says, put the banner back up, please. <laughs> Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> um, I believe Lucas is now 22. You guys can keep me honest in the chat there, but I'm pretty sure he's 22 right now. And it doesn't look a day over 12. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, Mike Matthew, I know you're rooting for Lucas. I mean, Raymond Linares, he's, uh, he's been having such a solid event. And Evan Broxmeyer getting to the party just a bit late, but I will go over the remaining players one more time. 
So the undefeated player is Billy Thorpe. He won the hot seat match against Jonas Suto, who is now sitting in the guaranteed third place spot. Um, right now, our two active matches, Sullivan Clark is playing Shane Wolford. We have, of course, the match you're watching right now, Lucas Ricasso Werner playing Raymond Linares. The winner of the Clark Wolford match will play Skylar Woodward. And the winner of the match you're watching right here will play Moritz Newhausen. After those two matches conclude, the winner of that group will play Jonas Sudo. And of course, the winner goes on to face the undefeated Billy Thorpe. So that's what's cooking, that's who's left. So we're down to eight players, eight players. Andy Down says 21. Thank you for clarifying. I knew it was close. And of course, ladies and gents, if you haven't done so already, please make sure you hit that share button. It only takes a couple of seconds to do it, but it goes a really long way. So please make sure you guys are sharing it out there. Let these players show their stuff to the world. And of course, for all the, pan the pool fans and enthusiasts out there, let them enjoy these matches too. Put it out there in all those pool groups and all that stuff. Um, guys, as you come back in, Joanne Corbett, welcome back. I, I cannot continue to just rattle off who's left. Uh, you know, I, I've done it a few times already. If you want to see uh, the bracket and see who's left in the event, uh, you can just go to digitalpool.net forward slash amazing. And you can see all of that information there. I will tell you that the undefeated player is Billy Thorpe. He won the hot seat match, and he's waiting for all of these guys to fight themselves and eliminate each other until they can get back to him. No problem, Joanne. Sorry. All right, so Lucas looking like uh, he's going to play return safety here. Not sure what type of uh, shot he's going with here. Thins the six ball, comes right back above here. Does look like he's going to leave just a small window between that 8-6. Thank you for posting that, Alex. Appreciate that. And Raymond's going to have an avenue straight between the 8-9 here. See if he can answer with something nice. Looking for coverage on the 7 ball, but he is going to go a bit long and leave an opening for Lucas to possibly pocket the 6 and complete the rack. Lucas did not want to bet at all on that shot there. Therefore, playing another defensive shot. Doesn't get the hook here, though. So it opens the door for Raymond to possibly get the hook himself. Now, this is really uh, spectacular to, to see the grind in these players and I'm sure a lot of you folks out there amateur players and some other professional players but I mean that's a testament to what it takes you know I mean think of just this one minuscule battle on the six ball to get uh, a good opening shot you know just think about what they're going through right now and think of how many times they've had to do something similar over the course of these few days and 
and get it done and actually succeed. I mean, that's that's pretty impressive and and a remarkable thing, especially for some of these younger players. Really strong stuff. I mean, anybody that's still remaining in the event right now, they did they did fantastic. And Raymond getting a little bit of help from the point of that side pocket, leaving the six ball right behind the nine ball there. Lucas going to be going to the air. If he's going to make this six, he's going to have to back cut it slightly. So this is really tough. It's not just send it towards the ball. He's got to cut the ball too. Makes the contact. Where's it going to end up? Right out in the open. Nice control there. And this looks like the first real opportunity Raymond's had in this match thus far. Uh, to put a point up, you know, where he's uh, he's a favorite to get the job done here. He really has played wonderfully. Uh... Jimmy, I see your uh, I see your question there, uh, about the shot clock, and I think perhaps uh, you might just be seeing like you know like the the shot clock running out, but from the previous shot, um, and maybe it just wasn't uh, relayed quickly enough. But neither of these players are in jeopardy of of fouling there. I don't think anyone has gone longer than thirty seconds. Uh, but if it does happen, uh, they can ask for an extension, and they can have that. There's also an extension after the break and also after a push. Yeah, uh, yeah, on Lucas's jump shot there, yeah, he asked for an extension there. He asked for an extension there. All right, here we go. Raymond Linares to break. This is rack number five. And he's down three to one in our race to nine. Gonna have to make a decision soon here. <laughs> See Raymond asking for his extension there. Leaves just the edge of this three ball here. Focus is going to try to just thin this one and come way back up table in a similar position to where he is now. Oh, he actually swung at that. And he's going to get no board. Even though he made the three ball, he made the cue ball right in after it. I don't think he needed to swing at that shot. That was kind of a low percentage shot in the first place. It's 
So right now, Raymond has everything he needs here. The nine ball's covering just a small portion of this top corner pocket, but I don't know if that's really going to be a factor for him. I've actually loved watching, uh, you know, Mr. Linares traveling and playing a lot of these uh, larger events, and he's uh, he's really coming along with this game. You know, he's a very polite player. Doesn't really uh, show any aggression or anything like that, you know, and, and those are things that I'm a huge fan of. You know, those are things I really love. And uh, really just thrilled to see him uh, doing well this weekend. Last time I, I saw Raymond, I want to say it was at the Sandcastle Open. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it was actually at the International Open in Virginia. It was at the International back in uh, November. Yeah, Mac Attack says definitely classy player, absolutely. And, you know, honestly, we really just need more of that. You know, the good example of a pool player, what's a pool player supposed to be. You know, play hard and play properly and just do it respectfully at the same time. I mean, Raymond's definitely a good example of that. It's really just a no nonsense get down to business type of player and and again that's what that's what we need to really elevate the game from that perspective. See our head official there, Mr. Mike Souza, just giving some side notes to Mr. Tom Hood. Quick update on one of our other matches. Shane Wolford leading 6-3 over Sullivan Clark. Oh, no. Where's the cue ball? Scratches in the side. And that's a common occurrence, actually, with the uh, cup break that Raymond's using there. Most of the players here break pretty much the same way. Um, similarly to... Uh, you know, say you got a, a magic rack template out there and the one is on the spot, you kind of know how someone's going to break and the wing ball's going to go in. You know, that's the way that you break that type of shot, you know, that type of rack. Same thing uh, with the nine ball on the spot. Most of the players, they cut the rack, the cue ball goes back and forth across the table. And, uh, you know, it's more, of a, it's more of a shot than a wild strike. Not really a, a mega power shot. It's it's more of a uh, controlled aggressional shot, you know. But it does it does open the door for some of the uh, the scratching in the side that happens often. And Will Ailey mentioning that Lucas has been a machine with the cut break this weekend. Yeah, I mean, he 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 practices the break. You know, that's that's what you're supposed to do. I mean, that's literally the most important shot, especially at this at this level of, of play. You know, when you're playing in a professional tournament, you absolutely need to be able to give yourself that first opportunity and, and hold serve. I mean, most of the players, they'll get out when the table's open. you got to get that first shot, which is why on top of practicing the break, it's not a terrible idea to practice your lag skills. Just saying. How about getting the first first break and you got your break down? That's pretty uh pretty good stuff there. Gonna wanna remind you guys, I know you had a fun little time with this band for a little while, but I just wanna remind you guys about the donations. Really appreciate you guys sending those things in. Got some great prizes for you. Some great prizes for you. And, again, we're going to do the 
the live drawing on Tuesday night. And we're going to give away that awesome nine-foot table perimeter billiard light, LED light. Got the Dynasphere Palladium ball set and also the autographed nine-ball vinyl banner, amongst other things. Lots of great stuff. And that's for your assistance in keeping these events rolling and being able to deliver free pool streams. And obviously, I, uh, I've been a big supporter and promoter of pool for, for a while now, but one of the things that I, I really stand firm on is I, I really like to be able to deliver free pool. You know, you, you get a lot of walk-by traffic, and, you know, the people that aren't necessarily interested in pool see it. And it's kind of like going to the mall. You know, you walk by the window. Hey, what's that? Oh, I didn't know I liked that. Let me go in and check it out. Hey, look, it's pool. Maybe I'll become a fan. Maybe I'll go buy a cue stick and go play in some tournaments or play in a league or something, you know, pitching to the pot there. But if everything is behind a paywall, I think that that prevents us uh, from, from progressing in some aspect. And... Uh, Again, when it's free, it's, it doesn't mean that it doesn't cost anything to, to make it happen. It just means that it's being delivered for the bubble. And that's where you guys come in, all of the uh, long-time pool enthusiasts. Make that happen. All right, Lucas looking to answer here. He's still leading 4-2 to two in this one. And again, this is a race to nine. So still a little bit of meat on the match. But going up 5-2 here for Lucas would be a monster, monster lead in my opinion. A little misjudged safety attempt. So Raymond's going to try to repay the sentiment and hook this man. I mean, I guess he could attack here. If he's confident with this one ball, he can totally send his cue ball right between the uh, eight and the three for position on the two. And it looks like he might be doing just that. His cue ball went really wide there, and is he going to get some good fortune? Yes, he is. And that's all right. It's okay to get fortunate sometimes, folks. No harm there. No harm at all. Will Ailey, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, because of the nature of the donations and how they come in, I don't have access uh, to the notifications when they do come in. Um, but, again, you know, supporting free streaming, I mean, that's just, that's one thing as it is, but... Uh, in this particular instance, this event cost quite a bit to make happen, and you know it really would have some help. And uh, Cliff Tyler, yes, um, there in the description of the video, in the description of this live video, um, you can actually see the uh, the links there. If you actually just lightly tap, if you're looking on a, a cell phone or a tablet, if you just tap one time on the video screen itself, just on the video, on the bottom of your screen, it's going to pop up and it's going to say uh, McDermott Classic 9-Ball from Amazing Billiards. And it says to buy the pay-per-view, visit digitalpool.net forward slash amazing. And that's, uh, that was the link to get all of the uh, outside tables for streaming of all of the matches. Um, and then after that, it says to donate to the free stream and participate in our giveaways, donate to, and it's got all the information there. Uh, PayPal and Zell is BoTFPowers at gmail.com. In the cash app is dollar sign BoTFPowers. Venmo is Bo-Powers. That's B-E-A-U, Bo-Powers. But again, if you want to just uh, click over there, you could screenshot it quickly and uh, you know go back to that afterwards. But uh, we're going to do the draws for this stuff on Tuesday night when... Uh, Everybody's going to have a minute to breathe and get it to happen. And uh, we will accept donations up until uh, that point. Uh, but you got to get them in uh, pri prior to, to uh, the drawing there. So 
you know, you can still send some stuff in uh, Monday if you like, but um, Tuesday is when we're really cutting it off. So if you want to just screenshot that information and go back to it later on, that's fine. Lucas overrolling that three ball. Raymond going to have a really nice opportunity here to gain another rack. Kenny Hoke, what's up, my man? Josh Steele. Are you still local, man? Are you still around, or did you uh, already head back home, Josh? I didn't, uh, I didn't really get a chance to say bye to you. Maybe you guys were going to, like, eat or something. John Glissarian, how you doing, buddy? Haven't seen you in a little bit. Hope all is well. Nice control from Raymond Linares. Dennis Daniels, thank you for sending in the stars. Really appreciate that. having a nice calm but also aggressive type of pace right now I'm really liking the way that he's he's walking the table right now you know I like to see players with a pep in their step but being deliberate at the same time I feel like that's the perfect balance and we talk about this uh, quite often you know having that perfect balance between you know the the quick fast and loose style of play you know that free stroking type of pool and also the deliberate uh, sometimes considered slower approach to the game uh, but I mean really there's a perfect balance there and that's where the top players uh, situate themselves Uh, Del Sim says, had to bounce, but great weekend. The beeps and shot clock on a stream is the best evolution I've seen on live stream pool forever. <laughs> well, more to come, man. More to come. There's uh, literally so many things that are progressing behind the scenes, and uh, I'm thrilled to, to be here uh, delivering some of that to you guys and gals out there. But... Again, I got to mention it again. If you're not on board with Digital Pool, what the heck are you guys waiting for? Digital Pool is the future of pool, period. Take it to the bank. Write it down. I'll sign it for you. All right, let's see what we got here. Raymond Linares to break. And he's down just 4-3. This is rack number eight. You see that cue ball? Narrowly avoiding the scratches we had suggested earlier with that style of break with the nine on the spot. Thank you, Andrea Britt. And Vasilios. Camparides probably botched your name up, but I apologize. Andrew Cleary, great question. How does one become on board with Digital Pool? Well, the first thing I would say is go to digitalpool.com and, you know, just really educate yourself on what they have going on and, you know, the direction programs and all of the pieces that they're offering on top of the software because, I mean, let me just give it to you this way. 
I can't sit here and explain every intricate piece because it's constantly evolving and getting better. Literally, uh, daily, um, you know, the people behind the scenes there, shout out to Zach Goldsmith and Isaac Wooten, doing fantastic work. Um, you know, they're, they're evolving as, as things come up, and, and it's just, you know, a lot of the pool programs and software that's involved uh, in our game, it, it really is just dinosaur stuff. And, you know, what Digital Pool is doing is really bringing us into the current times and even into the future with what they're offering. I mean, you're talking about every table at a tournament is capable of being live streamed, automatically cut and organized for you, player tags associated with the matches and which player uh, played in those matches, uh, organized into the data. I mean, it literally goes on and on that the things that Digital Pool can do and does do. And, I mean, th that's literally just a, a slice of what they're offering. Uh, so, again, uh, the the best thing that that you could do is just go check out digitalpool.com. Just go go poke around, mess around, see see what you see, and uh, when you have questions, you reach out to their support. You can reach out to Zach Goldsmith. Um, he's got uh, he's got all the answers, and uh, the answers he doesn't have, I'm sure Isaac would. But those guys are really great to work with, and really easy to talk to, and super smart, super smart. Corey in the chat says, I just joined Digital Pool. Pretty darn cool. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. All right, quick update. Shane Wolford over Sullivan Clark, 9-4. to 9-4, four. to four, so that means we're going to see Shane Wolford versus Skylar Woodward. That's going to be coming up shortly. And, uh, again, don't forget the winner of the match that you're watching right now is going to be playing more. It's Newhausen. So one of these two gentlemen is going to face German powerhouse Moritz Neuhausen. Such a strong player. All right, Raymond Linares ties it up four games apiece. <laughs> Andrew, wow, that's Andrew Cleary, that's fantastic. He says, I'm on board with the pool hub and the other hubs as well. Yeah, I mean, that's how it starts. That's how it starts. One wrong click and you might end up in the uh the dark web, so be careful out there. Please be careful. All right, rack number nine, Linares breaking. Cue ball ends up down table a bit. Is he going to get a clear shot here? That's going to be a dry break. Lucas has a clear hit here. I don't know if he's going to attack with the uh, the carom shot or if he's going all defense here. So he goes with the carom shot, but does not get the ball to fall. I want to say that, you know, Lucas has got a little too much of a pep in his step right now, in my opinion. You know, he came out rushing to a nice lead, 3-0. And now he's uh, won one rack out of the last five. You know, when, he, when he's given an opportunity, it seems like he's rushing to the occasion instead of rising to the occasion. And I'd like to see him just take a little bit more care uh, with his approach. You know, this is the time to really take all the care that you can to really give your best effort and 
Lucas leaving a possible jump shot opportunity to Raymond. There's actually a couple of ways that this can work out well for Raymond, keeping in mind that he's got that ball hanging in the top corner. And he's going with a kick shot. He's going two rails. One, two, click. Don't do it to him. Wow, hangs it right in the pocket. I'll tell you what, had that ball fallen, guaranteed. Lucas was shooting a 1-9 combination and He's probably a 98%, 99% to make that too. So I don't want to say that was fortunate. That was a nice return kick from Raymond. And the ball staying up. That's just fine. What's going to happen here? Is that cue ball going to that cue ball going to be seen here? He's got an opportunity for maybe a Massé shot here. I don't know if he can hit this naturally. It looks like he may be able to clip just the edge of it. Get the beard cam here. What do you guys think? You like the beard cam? Yeah, Chris Payson in the chat. Raymond has had some good showings lately, huh? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, and, and, and as I mentioned earlier, I, I'm actually thrilled to kind of be seeing his, his journey in pool and and kind of just hear some of the emotions on the side. And, you know, he's uh, he and I have talked a few times, you know, at, at the most recent uh, events, uh, like I said, I only I only was able to go to two of the most recent events, uh, and it was late last year. I saw Raymond at the Sandcastle Open, and then again at the International Open. You know, he was just expressing how he feels about his journey and where he's going in pool and and all of that stuff. And you know, he's he's great, a great example of a pool player. You know, that's the kind of guy that you want. Uh, when a stranger walks in the room and says, hey, I've never seen pool before, you want them to meet Raymond and say, hey, Raymond, tell, tell these guys about pool. Tell them what's going on. Or, hey, watch these guys play. And, and the same goes for Lucas. Lucas is also a well-mannered player. Now you're going to go out there and fearlessly just show your stuff and give it your all. and That's really uh, really the good stuff. That's going to put us into the future of pool. Al Micho, what's up? Angel Huarbe, what's going on? Jeff Bertrand, welcome back. Don Hanks, thanks for posting the link to the bracket. Thank you very much. And I guess this is okay, an opportune moment to uh, reiterate who is left and where they stand. So Shane Walford is going to be playing Skylar Woodward in just a minute. Uh, we also have the winner of this match that you're watching is going to play Moritz Newhouse, and that's the same round as the Skylar Woodward-Shane Walford match. Uh, the winner out of those uh, two equal matches there uh, will then end up facing Jonas Suto, who is waiting in the third place position. And whoever wins that one goes to face the undefeated Thorpedo Billy Thorpe. All right, Lucas sending that cue ball back and forth, but it doesn't look like he's able to make a ball Still leading the match 5-4 here, but, I mean, this is tight. These guys are playing really, really tight pool. Really, really tight pool here. And that's what we want to see. That's what we want to see. We want to see the good stuff. Yeah. 
Lucas seems like he's made his decision here. Looks like he's going to the corner here. Just has to manage the cue ball a bit. Obviously, it's easy to go into the into the side pocket there, but for the purpose of keeping the cue ball in position for the two and the three, opted to go to the corner. And that's what the accuracy is all about. You know, when you can make that determination and say, hey, you know what, I can go to the corner instead of shooting to the side, of course you go with that. Keep it pretty simple. Luke is keeping up that awesome execution there. And I like his rhythm right now. Maybe just a bit on the t on the faster side. Okay. I'd like him to be just a little more of the time he's taking and you know what he's actually looking at as far as references and just double checking his work. But I don't I don't want to say he's going too fast here. He's got a nice pace. Just a hair on the fast side in my opinion, but again, nothing nothing that's really gonna impede him. Such a talented player. Lucas Fricasso Werner coming out of Connecticut, Wallingford, Connecticut, representing Yale Billiards. Nice smooth stroke there. And he's going to be going up two games here. Make it six to four, and there you have it. Six four. And again, we are racing to nine here. Paul Lewis says a Shane Billy final. That's possible. It's possible. But how can you count these boys out? These boys are out here tearing it up. Lucas and Raymond, they're still rolling. Also, you got to contest with Moritz Newhausen. He's waiting for the winner of this match. Skyler Woodward's still on the one uh, one loss side. He's playing Shane Wolfer right now. And then, of course, Jonas Sudo, super super talented. With oh man, the 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 style and smoothness of uh, Jonas's game, man. When 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 the balls are open. It just looks so effortless. It really does. And, uh, I mean, there's still tons of talent in the event. So, I mean, it's still, in my opinion, anyone's game. Just my opinion. I could see any of these players really just going the distance and getting the job done. All right, Lucas breaking rack number 11. He's up 6-4, and this is a race to nine. Little love tap on the cue ball, bumps it up into position for the two. And Lucas is going to be happy with this. This is not. I like the, uh, I like the pace right now. Looking determined. John Askew calling it. He says he likes Lucas to win 9-6. Yeah, this is, uh, this is definitely uh, counting towards the Moscone Cup. And you got to keep these guys in mind, you know. All right, Lucas staying in line here. Still looking good. He would have liked a bit more angle here on the six. I do think he's going to be okay. But a little more angle would have just made his job a bit easier. 
giving him a natural way to get up table. And he hit that pretty strong. Nice lay here. Doesn't really need to do much with the cue ball here. As long as he pockets the seven, he should be okay. And he executes nicely here. Nice and smooth, wants to get up just a bit more. And his speed is right on point. Lucas Fricasso Werner looking like he's now gonna go up seven to four in this race to nine. Raymond Linares really needs to dig deep and take advantage of the opportunity if Lucas allows him an opportunity. Folks, thank, thanks again for everyone that was able to donate thus far. Uh, but again, support what we've got going on here. And uh, we're going to give away some awesome prizes and we're doing the live drawing on Tuesday night Tuesday night we're gonna do the live drawing and the grand prize that perimeter billiard light for a nine-foot table yes we'll send it out to you uh, Dynasphere Palladium set that's what we're using here and nothing but top top feedback from the players some of the players are in the chat there if you guys wanna verify for me so they don't think I'm blowing hot smoke but I've heard nothing but good things about this ball set. Um, far superior than the previous Dynasphere set that we had uh, here at Amazing Billiards. Uh, but that's a really sick set of balls right there. And uh, also the autographed nine ball vinyl banner. Um, I know that a lot of the top talent has already autographed that for us. And I'm sure more of them are going to do that. But thank you guys so much. Really appreciate that. Thank you, Dave. I appreciate that. Yeah, nice out from Lucas there. Raymond just stone in the chair, waiting for his next opportunity. Alex Jurovich, Lindsay Bazinet, how are you? asked for his extension here and he has Let's see what we've got here folks fine execution there really strong shot from Lucas for Caso Werner. You know, when the balls are laying the way they are at this, this point, you know, Lucas is uh, super confident and he just kind of, it's almost like he's rolling downhill, if you know what I mean. He's not really stressing about doing any of the particulars. I mean, he's, he's making sure that he stays on the proper side of the ball, but he's... Uh, Really just smooth, turn on the faucet, run out like water. Mike Burke, how you doing, sir? Vinny, thank you very much. Kevin Brewer, chat, my man. 
I was actually hoping that you were going to come up this weekend. I know you got uh, a lot of things going on, man, so I understand. But hopefully I'll see you again tomorrow night at home base. Mueller Yamario, welcome back. Lucas makes it to the hill, now leading eight games to four. The momentum has swung, and Lucas is excelling right now. He is excelling. Don't forget, we do have plenty of matches coming up for you. Again, other matches that are going to be happening. Shane Wolford versus Scott. Moritz Newhausen plays the winner of this match here. Between Lucas Ficasso Werner and Raymond Linares. And... Uh, after Moritz, Moritz match and the Sky Woodward match with Shane Wolford. Uh, those two winners will play each other for a shot at Jonas Sudo in the uh, semifinal match there. Lucas looking uh, pretty solid right now. Raymond Linares really hasn't uh, done anything wrong in these last few racks. Lucas is just keeping his game so tight, not giving up many opportunities. And his break is working very well. Is he going to get a peek at the three ball? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. As I mentioned earlier, that break is packed, especially at this level of play. And Lucas has got this break working very well for him. Very, very well for him. And all Raymond can do is wait for that opportunity. Which, from the looks of it, may never come. Uh, Mike Burke, yes, absolutely. Um, you can uh, you can get the uh, pay-per-view pass and watch the rest of the tournament for up to 30 days. You can watch all the other matches. You can just watch everything. So even though you missed it, go ahead. Uh, Vinny, thank you for the comment about the camera action. I'm over here pushing buttons, and uh, hopefully it's working out for you. Now there's uh, quite a nice array set up here around our feature table, the Rasson. Lucas looking for coverage. That cue ball's got to pick up some pace here. Wow, how about that? What a great line Lucas played there. Stalling on the eight ball right behind the seven. Oh, Raymond's going to go to the air. And you know he's going to be very sure of his stroke here. As he is fighting for term tournament life with his opponent on the hill. And him needing still five games. Needs this to just stay underneath that nine ball. And I don't know. Pierce, he might have an avenue to shoot this three ball outright. There's 
Going to have a little overstroke there. And I don't think he needs to get cute with this and try to go for something that's a little low percentage. I think you just roll the cue ball on the nine here. Just like that. Keep it close. Now keep it really, really close there. And he puts Raymond in a very tough spot. Again, fighting for his life. And Raymond makes the contact. He makes the contact. Uh, Lucas showing some respect for the shot there. And it looks like Lucas may have left Raymond Another tough shot situation. Nice kick there, Raymond Linares. But he is going to leave Lucas an opportunity to close out this match. Clean shot here. And this is uh, this is really this is really the biggest shot right here. And he nails it. What clean execution! Lucas is really feeling confident right now and playing well to back up that confidence. Nice stroke there. Got a love of that. Hitting the back of the pocket there. Great execution there. This looks like the beginning of the end for Mr. Raymond Linares in his tournament run. Isn't really much left here. And he is going to let him shoot it. He knows it. It's coming. And there you have it, folks. Lucas Fricasso Werner over Raymond Linares. Congratulations, Raymond, on your tournament finish. Great tournament play this weekend. Uh, really, really nice run. Really happy to see a player like Raymond do well. And we're going to see another feature match coming up soon. Folks, i got to hit you again one more time. Please make sure if you enjoying what you're watching please send in some donations and keep events like this coming to you for the bubble again a lot of cash blood sweat and tears went into this event and we need your help to continue to do those things so again if you just click on the video there the description of the video there is all of the options that you see on your screen there to donate and we're going to give away some cool prizes uh, this Tuesday night Tuesday night we're going to do that all right, I'm going to be right back with another feature match for you. Don't go too far because we got more action coming at you.
All right, here we go. Here we go. Back with you. If you're just joining us, I am Mike DeMarco from Ship the Cash. We're here at the McDermott Classic, live from Amazing Billiards in Malden, Massachusetts. And you're looking at the fifth, sixth position. So a loser of this match will end in the fifth, sixth spot. And the winner will face the winner from Shane Wolford and Sky Woodward, who Shane is now leading that match three to two. And we just saw Lucas Fercasso Werner defeat Raymond Linares, who finished in the seventh, eighth position. Pretty strong there. Nice finish for Raymond. And this young man right here, Mr. Moritz Newhausen, showing his stuff. And you know, I got to be honest. You know, Moritz, uh, along with some of these other younger, talented players, really, uh, really the future of pool, in my opinion. You know, these guys, so talented at such a young age, and uh, that's really what's needed to become that tip-top player. You know, they're, they're really just riding the edge of that elite class. And you see just pure confidence and ease to pocket the ball. Right down the center of the pocket. It's our official on site right now, Mr. Tom Hood. And there's been uh, quite a bit of action this weekend. I mean, to be honest, I couldn't have asked for uh, a better... Uh, a better outcome this weekend. Uh, yes. Jeremy Tucker Mooser, that's correct. Yeah, Lucas Fracasso Werner did win the uh, Ocean State at Snookers. I was over there calling the shots with you as well. And yes, this is a race to nine, and that will be updated uh, in just a sec. But yes, it is a race to nine. Got Mr. on the job. Update that scoring there. Yes, it is a race to nine. That's right. Lucas Fricasso Werner won the Ocean State um, over Mr. Jonas Suto. And uh, that was a pretty uh, pretty nice tournament there. Ocean State Nine Ball Championship. And Lucas looking to play a two-way shot here. It looks like he's actually playing a combination on the nine ball. He's going to roll the cue ball onto that three ball. Right, I thought he was playing the combination in addition, but he just put it in position for a combination, but... It looks like Moritz may have an opportunity at just at least a one-rail kick.
bit short, nipping that five ball. Still does leave an opportunity for a combination. I don't know if Lucas is still going to go that route. I mean, a three ball is available. It's not the greatest of layouts, but I mean, he could take this on. It looks like he's made a decision here. Maybe uh, intending on a three foul attempt here. He's going to put the cue ball right on the back of that three, but he doesn't really get there, and that's that's probably not going to be good enough. You know, at, at the top level of pool, just putting a ball in front of a ball as an obstruction is not really going to get the job done. You know, we talk about this very often where, you know, the level of your opponent dictates the level of safety play needed uh, to possibly get the upper hand. Or it's going to be going to the air here. Heavy favorite to make the hit here. Possibly even return safety. And that's exactly what it looks like might be happening here. Return safe from Lucas Fricasso Werner. This one's a little bit different. Looks like the edge is still available, so Moritz is going to be able to contact this one. Oh no, he had to kick there. Nice attempt there. Doesn't appear that this is pocketable. Lucas really. Needs to fight hard here. Well, he could make it. How about that? And with that, Lucas is about to open this rack up. Perhaps not. I thought he was going to shoot that. Maybe that wasn't available to the top left corner. It seemed as though it was. But apparently that wasn't the case. So, Lucas now faced with a little bit of a tester three ball here. He's going to be cutting it to the top left corner. Great control there. Open shot here. Again, a little bit of a tester, though. Has to contend with the seven ball if he's going offense here. Maybe we see some additional defense. Where's the cue ball? Ends up in the pocket. Unfortunately, for Lucas Fricasso Werner giving ball in hand to Mr. Newhausen, who now has the open shot, open table. And just five balls on the table. Got to like him to get out here. That would put him at a 2-0 lead. really showing his stuff here. And very easy for this talented young man. Going to pocket this one in the bottom right, and that puts him up 2-0 to zero in our race, 2-9. And 
you know, someone asked me here. And, uh, I mean, I'm a fan of both of these players, and uh, I hope both of them do well. So I just went ahead and said, uh, you know, whoever wins this match is, is who I'm rooting for, uh, so to speak. Yeah, Ben Angelus, uh, the the cue ball was on a perfect carom line when it contacted that nine ball to just send it directly towards that corner pocket. You know, that's just uh, that's just how it was. More it's showing that eye of the tiger. You see the break he's just displayed there. John Askew in the chat says, uh, watching the younger players battling it out, really impressed with how well they play and appreciate the talent, but equally envious of how consistent they are and how well they time the ball. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I think a lot of players uh, that are, you know, they've, they've been around the game for a while or a, a little longer uh, than these young players here. Uh, you know, it's easy to be impressed by these these players. You know, the the younger, extremely talented players. I mean, they just they figured out the game easy. It was it was shown to them easy. Um, I'm sorry, early, and uh, you know, they just run with it. That's how it works. You know, I always say that if you had two players that are rated exactly the same, they're both 780 on the button. And one of them is 22, and one of them is 42. Go with the 22. Always go with the 22. Um, and and the reason I say that is just, you know, there's there's not a lot of the uh, desensitizing to certain situations, and maybe the trials and tribulations over the years have put them into a position where, you know, they they're like, oh, this thing again, and that kind of stuff. And you know, I I always feel like the younger players. Uh, they can just snap and play perfectly and not have to miss ever. They can just perfect. And, and that's what we see sometimes from these young players. So, you know, I always, I always like to go to the youth, and I always say that, you know, they are the future, of course. Quick aside, speaking of young up-and-coming players, how about Shane Wolford currently up 6-3 over Skylar Woodward? on the neighboring match. And that is a race to nine as well, so he's leading that one 6-3. And remember, the winner from Shane Wolford and Sky Woodward will play the winner of this match right here, Lucas Fricasso Werner and Moritz Newhausen. All right, I wanna see some predictions here. Is Moritz gonna defeat Lucas Fricasso Werner or is Lucas gonna mount a comeback and win this one despite being down three to zero. Look at the break there. If he can get an open shot here at the two, which he's not going to, it would have been a nice opening shot there. But if you have your chat up, I'd love to see what you're thinking. Give us some predictions here. I am just one man and I'd love to see what the rest of you guys are thinking Lucas might be hitting the gap here and it looks like he did right into the opening Lucas ends up with the opportunity on the two ball. 
And this is uh, this is really brass tax time right here. <laughs> oh, you guys. <laughs> John Francisco says, my son is going to snap this thing off. Of course, referring to Mr. Newhausen, uh, Mike Matthew, making jokes here. John Askew says, from what he's seen, he thinks it's going to be more. It's 9-6 over Lucas. Andy Gow saying, Lucas, the comeback kid, a.k.a. the Connecticut kid, is going to win this one 9-7. But So Moritz looking to get ahead an additional rack here, four to zero over Lucas Fricasso Werner. Uh, Dennis asking, is that a nine footer? Yes, it is. Absolutely. Nine footer. Yeah, a couple of a uh, couple of hasty decisions uh, from Lucas has, you know, really just given control back to Moritz uh, when Lucas has those opportunities. And uh, you know, I don't think Lucas is playing poorly. I just think that you know Moritz is such a strong player that look at. Uh, hiccups uh, in Lucas's game, but Lucas really needs to to bear down and take advantage if he gets an opportunity to take advantage. Uh, ben Sutherland, it's actually the Palladium uh, set for the Dinospheres, which is one of their newer sets. Well, it's actually not even available. Um, through their website, uh, really tough to come by, but they are uh, very high quality. And again, I've heard nothing but positive feedback from the players this past weekend. Massive stroke there. Moritz put his hand on his head, saying, oh, no, I overhit that. He knew it as soon as he contacted the ball. He knew that he had overstruck that ball. And he's going to be asking for an extension, I believe. And he has. Be going with the kick here. Doesn't pocket the ball, but right now this is what we were mentioning, Lucas Fricasso Werner has the opportunity he needs. Needs to take advantage of this situation right now. He needs to just realize that he's in a good position here.
All right. Lucas gets a bit of good fortune from that safety. And this is exactly what he needed to put himself into a position where he can mount this comeback after being down 4 to 0 right now. Absolutely needs to finish the game right here. No time for minuscule errors. You see, uh, see Lucas just taking that that time needed. Make sure that he's doing the right things. No unforced errors. Comes out okay on the seven ball. Natural to go back down the table, but would have liked to be just a little bit closer to the seven ball here. He gets it to fall. And does he get the eight ball? Judging by his body language, he has the shot here. He doesn't end up with the offense shot there, but he does get a nice shot, sticking that cue ball right on the back of the nine ball. Again, you know, this, this could work out for Lucas, but if that cue ball was squared right behind the nine ball, that would have cut out the opportunity to go for the one rail kick or the two rail kick. You know, really got to cut off all of those opportunities. Tight shot here. Just needs to manage his cue ball well here. Execution. He comes out nice for the nine ball. He's going to put up his first point now. And hopefully we can stay in the good percentages as we've talked about. Where an error from Mr. Newhausen should cost him at least two games here in the format, but I guess that's going to depend on Lucas Ricasso Werner and his break, which has been pretty strong thus far. Uh, Xavier Libby said, did Joe Dupuy play? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Um, I know he lost a match to Met Vergara uh, yesterday. And I'm not sure exactly what happened. Not sure exactly what happened uh, today. I don't know who his second loss was, but he did have uh, he did have a go at the event. Yes, he did. And here we go, Lucas Overner breaking. This is rack number six, and he's trailing this one four to one. See how this break is cooking. Got to keep the cue ball above ground. Is it going to hang on? Sure it is. But does not end up with an open shot. So I want to say compared to Moritz break, Moritz definitely has the breakdown just a bit better thus far. But in any case, I mean, Lucas does have the break well. But... You know, Moritz has, has definitely got it under control, in my opinion. A little bit, a uh, little bit more so. And I don't know if Lucas is going to love what he just did there. I think he was trying to put the nine ball next to the eight ball, not just shoot it into it. You know, Moritz has a whole ball to work with and lots of things to hide behind. He could also possibly just go with the shot. Go offense here. And he 
Goes with a bank shot. And it does fall. So Lucas going to probably instantly regret his decision with that style of a push out. You know, giving a top player, you know, an open ball to shoot at, you're just asking for trouble. You know, there's there's endless possibilities of, of what a, a player can do with an open ball to shoot at, especially with, you know, eight balls on the table to hide behind. He played a nice opening two, two-way shot, banked the ball right in. Now he's right in line and able to run out. I'm going to chalk that up to a missed opportunity for Mr. Lucas Fricasso Werner. I think he needed to leave a little bit different uh, of an offering to Mr. Newhouse. And a shot there. It looks like he may be taking on a combination here. Definitely don't see the six ball going through either of these balls. And he's missed the combination. Doesn't leave the greatest of leaves for Mr. Fricasso Werner. But still an open ball is an open ball. Uh, ben, ben in the chat saying maybe too much adrenaline and hit the push out too hard. That's a possibility, but I don't think that that's what, what happened there. I think that was just a poor decision. You know, I mean, I think he was trying to make the, the nine ball uh, close to the eight ball, but even in that case, if he had executed that properly, he's still giving Moritz an opportunity to shoot at a full ball to play safe with the other seven balls on the table. You know, that's not a that's not a smart decision there. And I think in hindsight Lucas would agree with me. So Moritz now able taking his time to Really just give it his best effort here. He knows that Lucas is a talented player, but he's not going to get hasty with just a 4-1 lead right now. Don't forget we are racing to nine here. Winner of this match will play the winner of the Skylar Woodward and Shane Wolford match. Uh, Sky Woodward making a bit of a comeback there. Shane Wolford still up 6-5. But Skyler has won the last couple of games there. Making a little bit of a fight back. Got to make sure that six ball does not end up too close to the nine. And it does. Lucas leaves the ball open. And you can see by the body language he's not, he's not happy about that. He's not happy about that. Lamorts with an opportunity. Actually make the nine ball here. Doesn't make it. All right. Lucas really needs to take advantage here. Open shot. Unforced error from Mr. Moritz Newhausen. Take advantage.
right, so Lucas going to go to the air here. Lucas definitely a talented jumper. Xavier Libby in the chat says, if Lucas gets this rack, I'd like him to win this one. You know, with the eight ball tied up, going to have to look for something special, and Moritz may have just gotten it. I mean, you can see Moritz is a little anxious to get down and shoot, but he takes the time necessary. Just goes and looks. Have a quick look. Oh, that was a misjudged shot. And right there, see a little bit of a weakness there. Moritz missing an open shot there. Had he pocketed the seven, I think he came great into the eight nine. But giving another opportunity to Lucas here is not what Moritz was hoping for. Going to be very, very particular here. Every shot is so massive in the event right now. And like what we talked about earlier, how it's just remarkable what types of shots and battles on, you know, the one ball or, you know, back and forth on the six ball and hundreds and hundreds of shots over the course of a few days uh, to arrive at a point where you're still winning in an event with such talented players. It truly is remarkable that you can make it this deep. And, and just, just thinking about the road to getting here, I mean, all of those trivial situations, it's just, it's a special thing. And also it's, it's part of why the, the pool and billiards community is just, you know, at all levels, pool is enjoyable. Playing it at any level is enjoyable. But, you know, when you can truly see it played in, in such a high quality form, it's just, so, it's just such a special thing. And great positioning there from Lucas. And he's going to go up to two after this nine ball here. Still trailing 4-2 overall. Uh, John Copeland, you would be correct. John stating that the table looks like it plays super fast. It does. I mean, there's always an adjustment to be able to control the cue ball. And as we've seen uh, the whole weekend, we've seen these players come to the table and do their best to keep the cue ball on a string. Lucas with a little smirk there. Ready to get it done. I'd like to see uh, Lucas's focus come back to the table a bit more. I see him looking around the room a little bit. You got to keep your focus 100%. On the game at hand. And that break looked a little bit better, wouldn't you say? How about that for a layout? This guy just stopped at a truck rest stop, picked up a road map. He's going to run out paint by numbers here. That's it, the purple one's next. <laughs> Came a little bit short, to be honest. Didn't want to be impeded by that five ball. And he seems confident enough where he's going to take it on. And how's the cue ball? Still looking good. That was a strong shot, and that's enough. 
That's enough. Get this rack. And hopefully put up another point, putting him within one. Luke is still maintaining here. Got to keep the focus here. Mr. Fricasso Werner. It's really nice to just see the the hard work pay off for these young men. Ball going in the side pocket would have been absolute death, 100%. He hangs on. Controlling that cue ball very nicely. This will put Lucas at three. Can he hold it together? Of course he can. All right, Lucas Fricasso Werner now trails just four to three to Moritz Newhausen. I know there's a lot of Connecticut watching. If you're rooting for Mr. Lucas Fricasso Werner, please put it in the chat. Let him know that you're rooting for him. And if you're rooting for Mr. Newhausen, put that in the chat. Let him know. We want to see it. Yeah, Tim Levine, you said it, man. If Lucas finds breaks like that, he could run the set from here. Absolutely. Absolutely. No question about it. Doesn't look like he had a successful break there. I'm not sure what he changed exactly. Don Trotty says Mass here, Mike also. Josh Stables, that's right. I know Massachusetts here. I'm just saying, I'm speaking to his uh, his hometown. You know what I mean? Lucas has fans and supporters in a lot of different places. Little lax on the cue ball there from Moritz. Needs to make sure he hangs on. And a missed shot from Mr. Newhausen. I think he was looking to get the cue ball to fall behind the three ball. It's a two-way shot, but still, Mord's showing a, a, a just a bit of weakness here. Just a bit. Uh, Jesse Cameron asking, how old is Moritz? I want to say he's 20. I want to say he's 20. John, if you're in the chat, can you just confirm that for me? I know you know the answer. I want to say Moritz is 20 years old.
Yeah, Joe Joe saying, yeah, did say that. One mistake turned into three racks. I mean, that's really what it's supposed to be. One, two, three, at least a couple. Yeah, Sean Sean Santoro. Yeah, nineteen or twenty. That that's I I can't get an accurate one. I I, I knew that he was either nineteen or twenty. I think he he just had a birthday, which is why I'm a little confused on the exact age. Chris Gregory, welcome. Sharkstream, welcome. Thank you very much for the kind words. Lucas looking to get on even ground here. There's three shots away from tying it up at four. Slides down the rail there. Makes it happen. And I believe... Mr. Woodward may have just made that comeback we were talking about against Shane Walford. After being down 6-4, I uh, believe Skyler came back and just won that 9-6. All right, Lucas Vicasso Werner looking to tie this one up here. And he executes 4-4. And again, race to nine. Four four race to nine. And I, I said I said it before, I'll say it again. I, I'd be happy to see either of these young players uh advance in the event and do well. Again, they're both very well mannered and great examples of pool players and um, you know, again I, I always favor the youth in an event. I believe these two are the youngest two players here. I don't know if we can confirm that or not, but I'm pretty sure that these two are the youngest two players. Uh, Shane Wolford as well, who's... who's. I'm sorry, no. Uh, Skyler did not win that match yet. They are still playing. It's 8-6. So sorry for the early call there. But, yeah, 8-6 there. But yeah, we're still rocking and rolling here at Amazing Billiards. And if you took the time to come down this weekend, hope you've uh, enjoyed it. If you guys are interested in seeing the online bracket, just go to digitalpool.net forward slash Amazing. If you can't remember how to do that, just think Amazon, but with an I. Amazing. All right, we're on even terms here. 4-4, four, four, racing to 9. And it's looking like this is going to be a dogfight. That's correct. Uh, Jonas is younger than Lucas. That is correct. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if, if you think about it, if you think about it, all the players that are remaining, they're all really young players. Um, does that really make it so that maybe Billy and Sky? <laughs> no. Billy's the oldest player left in the event. That might be the case. I, th I think that's the case. Billy Thorpe is undefeated. So he's the, uh, he's the big kid on the playground. And the rest of the kids are all uh, fighting to get back a chance to play against Billy again. But boy, oh boy, I'm realizing what we've got going on here. <laughs> John Askew, you, you changed the wrong letter. <laughs> changed the O to an I. You crazy <laughs> I 
Yeah, Andy Downs, that's a good point. <laughs> he says the kids have more stamina than us old, worn-out folk. I mean, you know, there's some definitely some world-class players and top, top players that are older uh, or more experienced, I guess. But, I mean, it's really just uh, the youth is the is the – is the future and that's the, the exciting stuff because you're not really sure what they're capable of just yet and and how good they could become those are the things that really uh intrigue me and and i think that it's it's the same for a lot of the spectators and pool enthusiasts of the world you know if you see a young player and and they just play awesome and you're not familiar with them it's not someone you've seen 30 times 40 times over the years you know playing and, and competing in different events you know when you see a young player so excited you're like wow who's this guy who's this kid this kid's super talented you know it's just it's crazy to uh to see that It's coming out of that one okay. Got a nice shot here on the eight ball. Yeah, Joanne Corbett, absolutely. Joanne just stating that the young players are fantastic, and she's very happy to see Lucas rising to that high level. And uh, I agree with you there. And, you know, as as a younger player, I mean, these young men are technically still kind of kids, too. And uh, they're having fun, too. This is this is enjoyable. This is this is awesome. You know, if I'm 20 years old and I got to travel the world and play a, uh, a game like pool that I really enjoy. I mean, look at look at Moritz's face. He, he's, he's smiling. He's he's happy. You know. You know, win or lose, I mean, these guys obviously want to do well and they want to succeed in the game, but any way you slice it, these boys aren't doing this because it's not fun. I mean, it's great. It's great stuff. All right, well, we've played quite a few more racks since we made our last prediction, folks. What are we thinking here? Are we going to see different predictions now, or are we going to see the same thing? I want to know what you're thinking. Put it in the chat. I want to see it. Yeah, and I mean, you know, you guys are uh, commenting. Uh, Danny Murray says, pretty sure Skyler is older than Billy. And that, that could be the case, too. But it seems like literally just like two years ago or three years ago, you know, like Skyler was like this young bar box wizard coming up through the game. And now he's like this established world-class player. It's like it literally seemed like yesterday. You know, it was really not that long ago. And, and look at him now. You know, and, the, and this is this is how it starts with these young, talented players. Cue ball going to hang on. All right, so Moritz had a. Pretty difficult situation here. He's going to answer with that, but again, leaving a window open. 
Luca's going to try to take advantage here. Doesn't really get the result he was hoping for. Containing to a degree, but I don't believe that Lucas is going to get back. Going to manage the cue ball here. Is it going to go all the way out for him? Sure it is. A little bit of a stroke here. You see Moritz drag this cue ball. Don't think he wants to contest with this 9-6 here. Just like that. Nice shot. Someone's trying to hold my hand here. Nice shot there, and he comes short. He's not thrilled about it. You see the look of disappointment. He knows it's getting closer and closer to the end of his tournament life. He says, I'm not even taking a chance. I'm freezing him on the back of the nine. Good luck to you. He's like, take that. See what you can do there. <laughs> Mr. Bazinet says, imagine when he gets a sponsor. Student of the game, no drugs, no drama, respectful, and a beast. Get Lucas signed with somebody magical, Mike DeMarco. Well, I can try. I can sure try to get him some real sponsorship. <laughs> Sean Santoro makes the prediction, no more snow until next winter. John Q says he's sticking with his his uh, previous suggestion, his head says Moritz, his heart says Lucas. Xavier Libby, 9-7 Lucas. Uh, John Brandon says 8-8, eight, eight, but not going to pick a winner, huh? All right. Um, Andy Gow sticks with Lucas, 9-7. Tim Levine says 9-7 Moritz. Well, we're going to find out whose predictions are going to come true. Joanne Corbett, yes, this will finish tonight. It's been guaranteed. It's been guaranteed it will finish tonight. I mean, there's not a ton more tournament play, just a couple of matches. Uh, so Skyler Woodward confirmed he did eliminate Shane Wolford. So, so that's what's going on there. So the winner of this match will play Skyler Woodward. Then we move on to Jonas Sudo to play the winner of that match in the finals against Billy Thorpe. So that's uh, that's what's going on there. I'm just going to continue on and get it done. And Moritz breaking pretty good there. Makes two balls. He does have a shot at this two ball. I think he was trying to see if he's going to be able to. If he's going to be able to shoot the three to the side. I think that's what he's going to attempt here. Just kind of drag the cue ball. Just barely pocketing that two ball, but it does fall. Really nice cue ball maintenance there. <laughs> Sean says. Is it Lucas sponsored by Boom? Yes, he is. I I, th I think that, you know, there's different levels of sponsorship and, and different ideas of what a sponsorship is. And, uh, you know, there, there's, there's a lot of things to consider. Um, I know Lucas does have some sponsorship behind him. I know he definitely has some sponsorship behind him. But we need to see uh, some of the major companies to really get behind him and and give him that much needed boost. Yeah. 
That's right, K-Brew. He says, let's go, Lukey. Right now, he's got to deal with Mr. Newhouse and, and his extremely sound fundamentals. And really just all-around talent. He's going to float this one in. Cue ball just drags over, and that's going to put him up 7-4 to four here in our race to 9. Sharkstream says it. This German kid is awesome. It sure he is. Absolutely he is. And the Sharkstream also saying that they're hoping to get him a Q sponsorship. Working on it. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of ways that a player can benefit uh, from sponsorship. And, I mean, let's face it, folks. I mean, pool, um, I mean, it's such a, a tough gig. When you're when you're out there on the road trying to make it for yourself and battling you know all these top top players, I mean it's it's such a grind, and you know there's only so many Q companies and so many you know cloth companies and so many table companies and different promoters and things like that, and it's really tough uh, to to say hey I'm I'm going to choose this person to to put out there and this person to get behind and. You know, again, like, there's so many different levels of sponsorship. Um, you know, there's there's some players that literally are just, you know, they're in every tournament, and there's nothing that they need to, to give back. That's a true sponsorship, in my opinion. You know, if you're really behind a player and you say, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get behind you, you just put them in. They're in every tournament, and they're wearing your stuff, your patch, whatever it is. You're out there, uh, you know, the, the player has to hold up their end of the bargain as well. But, you know, there's there's different levels of sponsorship. You know, if uh, if a Q company says, hey, I'm going to sponsor anybody, they're going to sponsor John Francisco. And they say, hey, we're going to sponsor you. And they give him two Qs. I mean, he's got two Qs and he's still in the same boat. Did that help? Got to send him Qs on a regular basis. Maybe he can do some, some razzes and giveaways or whatever he wants to do with them and sell some cues and you know that kind of thing you really got to give them an opportunity to benefit from that um you know like if you're going to sponsor somebody you really got to you know be aware of what that type of sponsorship is and then the players got to fulfill their their end of the bargain too john copeland that's uh that's a reasonable uh, suggestion there, saying that if he wins it all, McDermott could, could sponsor the boy. And that's possible. But, I mean, you know, again, there's there's only so much meat to go around, uh, you know, in the pool community. And, and you got to pick and choose and, and be smart about it. And, you know, that's just how it is. Lucas really taking his time on this seven ball here. Just to make sure he's making the right decision. And I think in his heart he wants to he wants to go for the shot here. But his head's telling him, Are you sure you're supposed to shoot here? Maybe you're supposed to put the seven on the bottom rail and put the cue ball behind the nine. You know? So looks like he is gonna go with the offense here. And he's going to hang it. That may have been a nail in the coffin, folks. Lucas definitely disappointed about that. But I'll be honest, he gave it a good swing. But that might have been the nail in the coffin. Moritz Newhausen, 99.9% .9 about to get on the hill. And uh, you know, as we mentioned, his break has, uh, has been pretty devastating. I mean, I don't know how he planned that one out, but hey, he got where it was supposed to be to a degree. He's going to send this one to the top corner. 
And he may just go forward for the nine in the side. Just like that. And here we go. Nine to the side. And Moritz Newhausen makes it to the hill after the missed seven ball there from Lucas. I mean, I almost feel like Lucas kind of went against his instincts there where he wanted to shoot there, and, and he, his head kept fighting him, saying, you know what, don't do it, kid. Don't do it. Got to play defense here. It's not the right shot right here. Don't do it. And if he second-guessed himself, I mean, that that can be such a, a mental hurdle to deal with. You know, and, and he ended up missing it. All right. We've made it to rack 13. Moritz Newhausen about to break here. Let's see what he's got for us. Is it going to open up? That's going to be a dry break for Moritz. That might be the uh, first dry break for Moritz. I'm not sure. I don't remember another. Oh, no. Lucas misses the opening shot here. Can't be missing the open shots, Lucas. Just getting a little too hasty. you got to take each opportunity... And really just give it your best effort. Can't believe he was given that open opportunity right there. And he gave it right back. Or it's now leading 8-4 to four here. It's starting to look like the beginning of the end for the Connecticut kid. Will he get another opportunity? That's the question. Yeah, George uh, Texera, how you doing, my man? Uh, yeah, I, I, I think that that's exactly what happened there on the seven. And I think Lucas is still kind of, uh, you know, a little, a little uh, reminiscent of that uh, miss there. Just kind of thinking about it a little bit. You got to learn to have a short memory. If you're going to progress in this game, and perhaps he's thinking about, hey, I had the 7, 8, 9, and I could have been 5, 7 there, breaking, possible uh, break and run or a package or something, and y you could see it in him. He was like, oh, am I really going to shoot this? I think I should play safe here. Nah, you know what? I'll just shoot it instead. And oh, That second kiss on that 5 ball was such a massive thing. Is he going to get another fortunate bump? No, he's not. Lucas still... Able to see the five ball here. Got to be mindful of the speed in which you hit this one here. Speed is the number one factor here. Lucas has not executed the speed the way he needed to, hitting that ball much thicker than anticipated. Yeah, in the box sports in the chat there. My man Elvis Rodriguez, you're absolutely right. I mean, both of these guys have been playing solid uh, the event. I mean, lo and behold, they're, they're both here in the event still playing each other in the fifth, sixth position. I mean, neither player can be disappointed with their, their finish here. Fifth, sixth in a field like we've had. Uh, that's a massive win there uh, in itself. It really is. Lucas jumps the ball in. Where's the cue ball? Oh, no. Unfortunately, folks, I think that that might be the nail in the coffin. Lucas says, go ahead. That's fine. He's not even going to make him shoot it. That's it. Yeah, Lucas is uh, not really feeling it right now. He's like, I can't believe it. Jumps the ball in and scratches there. Uh, 
Oh, Moritz just going to hit a couple of balls. And uh, we are going to have another match for you shortly. It's going to be Moritz Newhausen and Skyler Woodward. All right, and folks that are still watching, please don't forget about our giveaways. We're going to be doing these on Tuesday night. And again, the grand prize, that perimeter billiard light for a nine-foot table helps support free pool, high-quality pool in events like you're watching right here, the McDermott Classic right here at Amazing Billiards, Malden, Massachusetts. So again... If you're able to donate, those are your options right there. It's also in the description of the video. If you're enjoying watching an event like this for absolutely nothing, I urge you to help support what we've got going on here. All right, we'll be right back with some more high-quality pool. Don't go too far.
right, ladies and gents, I'm back with you. It's your pal Mike DeMarco from Ship to Cash. And the thought alone of me returning apparently put that five ball into the jaws. So right now, Moritz Newhausen leading this one three to one. And this is the third, fourth match here. So the loser of this match ends in fourth place. The winner will be guaranteed third. Now with the comfort of Moritz from his previous match on this table, that's going to be a factor here where Skyler is making the adjustment coming in. So keeping that in mind, Moritz definitely has a bit of an advantage here. Skyler made that fantastic jump shot just a few strokes ago, but missing that five ball and Moritz taking full advantage, running the remainder of the match, of the rack rather, now leading four to one. Staying quite calm. And we've got our head official back on the scene, Mr. Mike Souza. Always doing a fantastic job. We're going to see how Moritz's break is looking at this portion of his tournament. Staying pretty consistent as compared to his previous match with Lucas Fricasso Werner. going to leak out just a bit here. He's got it going with his defensive attempt here. And he's not going to find coverage here. Moritz impeded slightly five ball, so he's got to elevate. So, folks, I mean, you've seen Moritz on this table here. Really giving you some high-quality pool here. I'm curious if you're thinking that we're going to be able to see Skyler overcome his 4-1 deficit right now and take advantage in the match. I mean, Skyler's definitely capable. See, they're still thinking Skyler is going to be able to overcome that. Skyler just double checking what he's going to do on this six ball here. seconds. Activates that K 
kill mode immediately. And it does appear that the six ball does pass. We've got a nice shot here. It doesn't seem that way, even from this vantage point, but apparently Skyler's got a plan here. Wow. Talk about power and accuracy there. Fired it at the back of the pocket. Nicely done there. This will put him at two. Now a race to nine here. So perhaps, you know, the comfort level of Moritz on the table from the previous match was enough to get him up in the set. But now that Skyler has had a minute to adjust and figure out his uh, slight adjustments onto the new table. And uh, perhaps, uh, perhaps we're going to see Skyler take a stab and maybe make a little comeback here and possibly take the lead. I mean, in his previous match with Shane Wolford, he was down 6-4 and uh, ended up winning 9-6. See some uh, conversation with one of our officials there. bit of communication never hurt. All right, Skyler going to be coming to the break here. Looking pretty good. All right, here we go. This is rack number seven. Skyler's down four to two in this race to nine. Don't forget the winner of this rack, I'm sorry, the winner of this match is going to be facing Mr. Jonas Suto from Spain. And that's going to be uh, the determining match to see who makes it to the finals to face the undefeated Thorpedo himself, Mr. Billy Thorpe. Billy Thorpe undefeated so far. We're talking about the uh, the fact that the majority of these players are all the younger uh, top guys. You know, they're all the, the young talent uh, that made it to the final eight. And, uh, you know, that's just a testament to to what it is that these young players have to offer. You know, missed combination there, but he played it properly. Not giving up anything here. Skyler still got a little bit of a smile on his face here. Gets him a little bit jacked up over this five ball, and that's that's really the only issue here. I mean, I think Moritz has got enough to shoot this comfortably. Extension's been called. See him elevating that cue stick, driving that perfectly down the line. Ends up nice on the three ball here. Enrique Montas says 9-7 Sky. Like Matthew says, he thinks Jonas wins the tournament. We 
they've still got quite a bit of pool to play here, even just in this match. But Moritz, totally capable of continuing his performance thus far. Folks, want to remind you, if you haven't hit that share button, please do so. And unfortunately, Moritz missing the seven there. Wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting him to, to miss in that situation. Thank you, Bobby Hilton. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. And, yeah, he says this kid, wow, yeah. I mean, Moritz is definitely a, uh, a monster on the table. He's, he's so talented. And, uh, you know, players like Moritz and also Jonas Sudo, uh, definitely uh, the future of pool. Guys like Lucas Fricasso Werner, the young up-and-coming players, that's what we're looking at going forward. And that's really what will we have to look forward to. You know, that's uh, that's really what we're looking for. We want young, talented players to show us how to be uh, a proper example of a pool player, showing us their talents. And, uh, of course, you know, getting stronger and stronger. Yes, sir. Nice work to Bo. Indeed. Indeed. Bo's over here pushing buttons and running wires still. He's on a uh, he's on a button pushing expedition this weekend. He's installed more buttons. He's going to put another button in in right now, and uh, I feel like uh, <laughs> it's never enough, man. It's never enough. But thrilled to be working with Bo, and. Uh, I think it's a uh, match made in heaven, to be honest. I think there's a lot of uh, positives that come with working together and powering up. And I'm really looking forward to the future of uh, just what we've got working right now. Looking for the two ball. Just barely leaks in there. Not really sure what Skyler's thinking here. Skyler calls for his extension. So he's going with the combination. It's a pretty strong. Skyler really, really trying to give it his best here. And I feel like, you know, sometimes just after so many hours of playing, it's just so tough to keep your mind 
uh, as sharp as you can or as sharp as it can be. Nick Bousquet, thank you very much. I appreciate you saying that. Thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, there's uh, there's a lot of positive things going on in the Northeast right now, and I feel like it's a collective effort from all of those powerful entities and people pushing and just really just staying consistent with uh, promoting this this lovely community that we have. You know, I, I, I truly do believe that things will only get better. I'm really looking forward to uh, the future with all of our friends and family in the circle. But again, I really do believe that it is a team effort overall. And uh, got to be willing to you know, just say, hey, let's work together. Let's make it happen. You know, and, and positive things will come. Positive things will come. Skyler. Take this rack back from Moritz. And he's going to put us on even ground here. Four to four now. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. What have we got going on here? Skyler's going to take a quick second. Maybe he's looking for just a drink on the rail or something like that. I want to remind you guys about the donations. Again, if you like what you're watching and you're able to support it, if you'd like to support it, you want to see more things like this, we're going to need everyone's help. Please make sure you help us out. I'm going to give away some really cool stuff. Again, the broadcast comes out on Tuesday. And we're going to give away that perimeter billiard light, the Dinosphere Palladium ball set, the autographed nine ball banner, and the amazing billiards jersey from In the Box Sportswear. Just pretty good stuff there. Oh, Skyler looking here. So successful break, but I'm not going to call it a favorable shot here. There's a chance that he's got this nine ball carom. I don't know if he's liking it or not. He's thinking about it. There's no way he's not thinking about it at least. I don't think he plays the combination. But I do think there's a chance he may entertain. Well, maybe he's looking at that as, a, as an option. But no, he's just gonna he's gonna play the duck and cover, it looks like. And he managed manages the speed pretty well there. It's getting right down on the shot. Showing some confidence. And he's not going to be thrilled with that. But doesn't leave a clear shot to a pocket. The combination is available. And, of course, another defensive attempt. Seconds here. All right, 
voice called for its extension. Uh, Mark McClure, this is at Amazing Billiards, Malden, Massachusetts. We're at 40 Faulkner Street in Malden. Literally, like, just outside of the Boston uh, area. I mean, pretty much at Boston, I mean, you drive down the street and you cross the line. But Malden, Massachusetts... And uh, play began yesterday. And now we are uh, now we are rocking and rolling with our final four players. We've got uh, the two gentlemen you're watching shoot right here, Skylar Woodward and Moritz Newhausen. And the winner will play Jonas Sudo. From Spain, winner goes on to play Billy Thorpe, the uh, undefeated player. All right, so let's see. Morris can take advantage here and of course he's going to overstroke that one cue ball stays up thank you all of our friends for coming back in see Mike Jackson Mike Matthew Scott Tavernier Josh Thiel John Rogers Andy Downs Angel Gonzalez, what's up, everyone? Got a lot of positive movement there on the two ball. However, Moritz is going to receive the open shot. So he's going to be thrilled about that. Nice shot there from Mr. Newhausen. Nice execution there. That was a key shot. I don't want to say Esther, but definitely a key to getting this point here. Moritz wants to stay ahead of Mr. Woodward and to do so he's going to need to give it everything he's got Skyler of course a household name in pool and it is not an easy feat to get one past Mr. Woodward let me tell you that it was never going to be easy and Moritz knows this He's played enough events where he's run into these guys. And uh, my most notable experience with Moritz uh, was my first time seeing him in person. That was at the Sandcastle Open last year. And he ended up in fourth place there. Uh, Sean Santoro, is there a player list for next weekend? Yes, there is actually. Um, and you can see that. Um, I want to say you can just go to the Racks page, uh, but also the owner, Pete Brown, he posted that as well. Uh, guys, uh, I know that we have some folks from the Vernon, Connecticut area, the Racks crew. Uh, we're talking about the Connecticut Valley Open next week. Um, can somebody please uh, just post that link? I know it's there. Uh, for the players list. I know one of you guys has that. Or at least uh, tag the page or something like that. Wherever it is. I know you guys know where it is. Do 
Jeremy Lofton says he wants to see Sky and Billy in the end. That would that would be uh, that would be fitting, I guess. Uh, Clint Dixon, uh, what's the race in the final match? I believe it's a race to thirteen. Yeah, it's a race to thirteen. Thank you for sharing, Bobby. Thank you for helping influence. Really appreciate that. Richard Jones, welcome to the party. Uh, Andy Gow, the drawing on Tuesday night, I'm not sure the exact time, uh, but I'll tell you it's probably going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 8 to 10 p.m., somewhere in that range. But I don't have an exact time when we're going to do the uh, the draw. I mean, if you want to understand uh, the world that's going on uh, on Tuesday, Bo's going to be uh, running the TNT Tuesday night tournament here at Amazing Billiards. If you're local, definitely come check that out. But Bo's going to be here hosting on Tuesday. Uh, I'm going to be in Rhode Island at Snooker's preparing for Wednesday night action the, on the next day. And we're going to uh, do a quick co-op uh, broadcast to get those winners their prizes. And uh, very quickly after that, uh, right in with the uh, Wednesday night action at Snookers. And then I hit the road again on Thursday over to Racks in Vernon, Connecticut for the Connecticut Valley Open. And I'll be there till, uh, till Monday. But tomorrow's uh, somewhat of a travel day. And uh, uh, hopefully a recovery day for myself and hopefully also for my man Bo Powers. Going to need some recovery time. It's been uh, no sleep for, let's see, forever. <laughs> so I'm really hoping that uh, both Bo and myself can get some rest and uh, you know continue to do what's going on here and just keep on pushing. Ryan McCrum, yeah, it was nice to see you, man. Glad you could stop by. I didn't get a chance to say goodbye to Renee. Tell her I said hey, and I'll uh, see you guys. Actually, I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'll see you guys tomorrow at Snookers. Mac Attack, Robert Pohl. Welcome back, boys. Came back at a great time. Moritz Newhausen and Sky Woodward. 5-4 right now. Moritz was up, I believe, 4-1 to one at the beginning. And uh, Skyler's been kind of tearing back and... I mean, it's, it's really become somewhat of a fight here, uh, kind of battling. No one's really just running open tables. It's safety, safety, safety. Kick in like you're seeing there, and the balls aren't really sitting properly. I mean, this is definitely going to be something where whoever wins this match definitely earns it. Now they're going to go right around the top side of this eight ball. Nice execution there. Skyler having a pretty stellar event. I mean, Skyler was the top seed in the tournament overall. You know, he was the uh, highest rated player. And again, the top seed for sure. I mean, in nine ball pool though, you never can tell exactly what's gonna go down. Put in right there. Nice camera work here. Sky finishing that one. I go on even ground now, five to five. 
So Skyler's won four out of the last five games. So if that gives you an idea of how this match is going at the current time, Skyler's definitely got the uh, got the momentum behind him right now. But you know, we said it earlier that it's it's a possibility. It's a possibility that you know early on in this match, Moritz had the advantage uh, for comfort on the table, and Skyler was a little bit uncomfortable uh, coming to the table for uh, the first match, coming from a, a neighboring table. Uh, but perhaps, you know, as we suggested earlier, that that Sky was going to get a hold on the table and figure it out, so to speak, and in and, and really tear back and just you know start to uh, start to take over control of the match here. Shot there, pocketing the seven ball. The one ball goes a little bit further than Moritz was anticipating. Ted Saros, what's going on, sir? Thanks for joining. Uh, Auden Ortega, no, they are not all Rassons. Uh, this is the only Rasson in the room. Great kick in right there. Moritz still having an uphill battle. Um, uh, Auden Ortega, no, they're not all Rassons. They're gold crowns, Brunswick tables, and uh, this Rasson is the feature table. You can see them in the uh, top of the shot here. A little lax there. Um on that shot there. I think Moritz could have given that a bit more effort. But Skyler's not going to be disappointed with what he's coming to the table to, which is ball in hand. Two nice positional shots here, and the rack is going to be toast. Two to the three, and then the three to the four. The five out here is uh, very, very simple stuff. It's really just two good positional shots, and the first one is done flawlessly. Now a little close to the rail here. I mean, the first guy, he played that at a great speed. So he's got a natural angle to float above the five here. He doesn't have to manipulate the cue ball much. And he's right back in the line. Matt Resendiz, welcome back. Mr. Bazinet, welcome back. Looking like he's going to clean up and lead the match for the first time. This would be a 6-5 lead in our race to nine here. And perhaps Skyler is on the hunt for some revenge for Mr. Jonas Sudo. As that is who dealt Skyler his previous loss, his only loss. Mr. Sudo won that match 9-7 to seven just a few rounds ago. Skyler getting an opportunity right here for the first time leading. Be 6 5 here. And he makes it 6 5 to Skyler Woodward. Great shooting here. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate it. 
That's right, Bobby Hilton, a world-class player. I mean, all of these players uh, at the end here are world-class. I mean, they really are, all of them. I mean, when you look at the uh, when you look at the ratings and uh, you know the events that they're traveling to and and where they're competing, I mean, a lot of these players are household names, to be honest. Nice break there from Skyler. What's he going to get for the one ball? Looks like he's got the one available to him. You know, I got to say it's starting to feel like it's turning into the Skyler Woodward show right here. See some of our spectators locked in on the match. Showing the show in front of them. And, you know, I have, I have to just say a quick thank you to everyone that did come down personally into the room to support this event. Whether it be through purchasing spectator seats or uh, raffle tickets or whatever it is. I mean, just appreciate all of you guys and gals that came out to support those of you that are donating, really appreciate that. Sean Santoro, I'm going to tell him you said that. <laughs> He'll love it. Guys, I mean, what are you thinking? Sky Woodward's up 6-5 here. Moritz at the table. Is this going to be a dogfight right to the end? Is Skyler Woodward's top-class game just going to hold tight? And is he going to dominate the match from this point? Or is Moritz Newhausen? Going to defeat the mighty Skyler Woodward and go on to prove himself. I mean, we all know that any four of these final players are capable and, and uh, deserving of a win here. And don't forget that final match race to 13. I mean, there is uh, there's really no advantage to any player in that in that situation I mean I guess if you put the highest rated player in a longer race perhaps they do have a slight advantage there just because of the length of the race but I mean all of these players are uh, top caliber top quality shooters all right, massive shot here massive shot here Skyler looking on, just waiting for that opportunity. What a delivery of the cue stick there. Got to get by the nine, and sure he does. You want to talk about a world-class shot, that's it right there. Very fine. Just don't want to get lazy here. want to make sure and you give every shot the respect that it deserves and Moritz takes that one ties it back up at six games apiece on even ground so how about that race to three race to three and there is some good cash on the line here and also, the opportunity. I mean, these players are 
getting points and cash and clout and obviously getting some recognition for making it through an event like this and continuing. Hunter Smutney, you're welcome. <laughs> Again, if you guys haven't shared, please make sure you hit that share button. Let everybody enjoy these matches. Put it in all those pool groups. And, again, don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe to the Amazing Billiards Tournament page that you're on right now. And that's Amazing Billiards. And this way you get notified. Amazing Billiards goes live. Get to enjoy all the action here at Amazing Billiards. That's right, Brian Carroll. Billy Thorpe is the undefeated player. And Jonas Sudo sitting, awaiting the winner of this match here. His chances here. Letting the clock run down. He calls for his extension. Remember, you only get one of those per rack. Barring it's not after the break. And he's still a little unsure of how he wants to go with this. This is kind of tricky. It looks like he wants to maybe attack here, but you can tell he's a little, a little timid about how he wants to approach it. And that was all right. He kind of manufactured something there. Almost got fortunate with the seven rolling into place there, but Moritz is going to have a nice open shot on the one ball here. Nothing really tied up in this rack. Yeah, Sean Santoro, that's a, that's definitely a true statement. Definitely a true statement. Our friend uh, Sean in the chat there saying, you know, it's funny that we call it the hot seat when all the player really is doing is cooling down. And, uh, I mean, you're not wrong there. That's correct. Always wondered uh, where that where that term came from. I bet you there's someone in the chat that knows where that phrase was coined originally. Sophia Mast, welcome back. BJ Hux, welcome back. It's looking for coverage on the nine ball, but does not find it. Skyler now with a nice opportunity to take this rack back and possibly take it here. We're down to just a race to three and our race to nine here, tied up at 6-6. Six, six. And I'll tell you, every shot is massive here. Every shot is just massive. Barely falling there. Barely falling. And he ends pretty well under the three. He's not thrilled about it, but it's manageable. 
And choose your battles in this game for sure. No extension left. He's got to shoot, and he does. Moritz anticipating his next opportunity. Welcome back, Bobby. Welcome, Brad. Mr. Smutney, welcome back. This guy says, I'm going to make two balls in one shot and then hook myself. Boy, oh boy, I was not looking for that. Yeah, I know that face very well. That's oh, that's what you're going to do to me, game? All right. I'll come with something then. I'll show you. Let's see what he can create here. That's not too bad. Not too bad at all. Or it's thrilled to be back up and shooting here. Again, we're only racing to nine. And it seems like the racks are getting more and more difficult to just complete. What a shot that was from Moritz Newhouse. And you want to talk about keen eyes, sharp fundamentals, and just confidence. Look at that. This guy looks like, well, hot damn, this kid's good. How about that? Look at that. I can hear some, some applause for these young players here giving us a great show. Some of our spectators there, and there's the guy right there, Billy Thorpe, waiting for his next match. Also, Mr. Jonas Sudo over there. Boys are playing some three cushion around the corner. Lucas Fricasso Werner. Nice finish for that young man. Fifth, sixth place in the event here. He was our previous match with Moritz Newhausen. And Tom Hood, nice to have you as an official this weekend. Did a great job. And Brad Boland, yeah, it's a nice place here at Amazon. Really a vibe here. And again, we're located at 40 Faulkner Street in Malden, Massachusetts. You can consider it the Boston area. It's very close. But, uh, yeah, it's a very unique vibe here. And I want to say that uh, of, of all of the pool rooms that exist, you know, Amazing Billiards really uh, just exudes that they're focused on the pool. Q Sports is the focus here at Amazing Billiards. Now that's the uh, number one. How about that? And he made the two ball just in case. Unfortunately, Moritz missing the opportunity there. And... Uh, he went with the bank shot on the two ball, two to the nine. Skyler takes advantage and caroms the nine in. Now we're tied up 7-7. Seven, seven. That's a big, big rack right there. That's a big rack right there. That was a great shot. <laughs> Evan Broxmeyer says the shot clock warning sounds like a hearing test at my doctor's office. Well, now you can practice for your next matchroom event. <laughs> yeah, that was a great shot. 
Rich Senna, welcome back. Evan Moreau, Matt Kraus, welcome back, boys. Yeah, here's one of our lovely cameramen right there, Mr. Patrick Sheldon. He looks, uh, he looks thrilled to be here, that's right. He looks thrilled. He's having a great time doing his part. But, I mean, to be honest, I mean, there's so many times that people that work in this industry are just, they're just dead tired and frustrated and at wit's end with everything that's gone on for the however many days, weeks, months, years, whatever. But you know what? We just keep doing it. We just keep doing it. We're not tired of doing that. It's just you almost you almost learn to love the pain uh, from from what you've been been put in, put into it. You know what you you're putting in there, and it really is uh, really is a grind sometimes. And that face is very familiar. <laughs> I know that face. Again, Skyler just taking a quick. Quick bird bath, and uh, he'll be getting back with us momentarily. Finish out these final few games here. Remember, we're racing to nine here. Don't forget about our giveaways. These are going to be given on Tuesday night, just two days from now, Tuesday night. All you lovely folks that are able to donate, please. Help support events like this and keep them free. Thanks, Mike McKeever. I appreciate that. Nick Bousquet, that's right. It's for the love of the game. Absolutely. Joe Ruda, if you're out there, for the love of the game, you know the deal. Uh, Brad Boland says he was with Buddy Hall and Mark Wilson for a clinic a couple of weeks ago in Illinois. He says, talk about some great instruction and words of wisdom. I I couldn't imagine. I mean, those boys know their stuff. Uh, Paco, uh, the only way that you can get tickets there is to donate. And... Um, all of the options to donate are in the description of the video. There's PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, and Zelle. You know, those are all of the options that you have there. So if you want to get involved, that's how you do it. Just send it on over. Uh, you know, if you are extra generous with us, then uh, we will be extra generous with the amount of tickets that we can offer you. Moritz, again, taking a swing at the 2-9 in this game and doesn't make it happen. So he's going to give Mr. Skyler Woodward an added opportunity to take this match down. This guy is just so strong, man. Rarely making an error at any point. Now this is really, uh, this is really uh, just really speaking to Moritz here as well. To be on even terms, seven seven. And of course, at the same part, this late in the event, and I'll tell you. Very, very strong play here. And that nine ball hanging. Skyler's not even concerned with that. He's just going to finish the table the way that it's supposed to be done. The hard way. I guess you could call it the easy way as well. Here we go. Skyler for the nine ball. Get himself on the hill. 
Now leads 8-7. Eight, 8-7. Seven. Eight, seven. So, now the pressure is really, really cooking for Moritz Newhausen to get an opportunity. And Skylar Woodward's got to feel great about breaking on the hill here. He's got a little bit of that confidence cushion, as I call it. Kevin Brule, you said it. Moritz was a little tilty right there. Skylar is a sick human, <laughs> yeah. I'm picking up what you're putting down there. All right, here we go. Skylar Woodward breaking. This is rack number 16. And we're racing a nine. Skylar's on the hill, 8-7. Let's see how his break looks here. This is going to tell you exactly how. No, wait. Oh, nine ball on the break for the win. Moritz is going to have to deal with that. Oh, boy. All right. It's here for Moritz Newhausen. Fourth place finisher. Breaks the nine ball in the side to get the W there. Wow. 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 All right. Again, folks, uh, we're going to have another feature match for you in just a minute. It's going to be Skyler Woodward looking for revenge against Jonas Sudo. I know Jonas is going to be on this table and warming up just a bit, get some comfort. So why don't you guys take this opportunity and send in those donations, get yourselves involved in our giveaway. Again, we're going to do the broadcast on Tuesday night, and our number one grand prize is going to be that perimeter billiard light for a nine-foot table. Even if you don't have a nine-foot table at home, you can put it at the pool room. You can sell it. You can donate it back. Whatever you want to do, it's yours, and yes, we will ship it. Also. Dinosphere Palladium Ball Set. That's the set that we're using at the event here. And uh, nothing but positive feedback there. We got this awesome piece of memorabilia. The Nine Ball World Rankings Vinyl Banner. Autographed by all the top talent here at the McDermott Classic. And of course all kinds of cool amazing billiards. Merchandise and swag. And you see those ticket denominations on the bottom left there. Alright, so we're going to be back momentarily with some more pool. But for right now, I'm going to step away for a minute and be back with your next feature match.
right, folks, we are underway. Sorry if I scared you. Audio did not die, Mr. Hood. It was off. And now it's on. Here we go. Semi-final match here. Skyler Woodward and Jonas Suto. It's a race to 11 for a shot at the undefeated Billy Thorpe. What are we thinking here? Are we going to get revenge? Is Skyler Woodward going to get revenge on Mr. Suto? Or is uh, Jonas going to stand tall and say, you know, I deserve to be here, sir. I mean, this is, uh, this is really kind of the same situation that we saw earlier where one player has an advantage. Torsten, nice to see you, brother. Um, drive safe, boys. You know, it's it's really uh, similar to our, our previous situation in the in the last match there where Moritz came out with the comfort on the table and, you know, came out to a 4-1 lead early on. And then Skyler found his comfort zone and was able to kind of manage his way to a victory. 9-7 there. Golden break in the final rack in our previous match. But uh, you know, it's uh, it's a different situation here because now we've got Skyler Woodward in stroke and Mr. Sudo coming in cold. He had a short time to warm up on the table, but not nearly as long as Skyler. And Skyler is definitely in stroke and comfortable on the table right now. So that's definitely a factor. I see a couple of guys in the chat there looking for uh, a couple of games. Uh, to take Jonas, but I mean, can you really can you really give up anything here? Such a strong shot there. I, I really do believe that this this match, is, as we've said so many times, is going to really just come down to the break, and you got to give the edge to Skyler here. Jonas has such a strong break himself, but just because of the uh, the comfort he's had in, uh, you know, playing on this table. The previous previous match there, he's had time to work out some particulars and make it happen. So, got to think that Skyler's got the edge here. Red Garson in the chat says Skyler plays for Rasson. He is comfortable on this table because he has a tighter version of the same model. Yeah, I mean that's all fine and dandy, but he's been playing on gold crowns and you know switching table to table. It's not a, uh, it's not the same situation. You know, I'm sure he knows how the table works and and he's comfortable playing on it. But you know, today is a different day than yesterday, and so on and so forth. You know, we talk about that uh, in how remarkable it is that, you know, these top players bring their quality game literally all the time, which is so tough to do and staying consistent and being able to do the same things over and over and over. No one is looking for corner pocket here on this two. It's going to be really 
Really cautious on how we place the cue ball here. He's sending that straight down the line. And it does fall. Nice control there. And he's back in the line. So now you see Mr. Sudo finally gets the look that he was looking for. A little anxious. And he draws the cue ball right into the side pocket. Uh, Eric Hildy, no, not all the tables are, are this fast. Uh, I want to say that this is definitely the fastest, in my opinion. Um, I'm sure there are some other tables with similar speed, but from what I understand, this is the fastest of the tables here. Paco, thank you very much. Thank you very much for donating. Really appreciate that. And don't forget, Tuesday is when you're going to see the broadcast uh, to give those items away. And remember, our grand prize is a brand new perimeter billiard light. Same that we're using here for the Rasson feature table. Skyler just continuing to deliver that cue stick straight down the line. <laughs> Dominic Dunn, how are you? Fun at his buddy, apparently. Dominic, I heard you had a uh, recent tournament win. Not sure if that info was correct or not, but I believe I saw that. So if that is the case, congrats. I hear you uh, you bested uh, the highest rated player in the entire world at the event. So that's a feat in itself. Of course, we're talking about Andrew Cleary. The only player with a 900 plus Fargo rating. I think he said it was 987, somewhere in that range. That's pretty pretty powerful. The days of staying under the radar are over for Mr. Cleary. The word is out. The players know. That's why he stays away from events like this. All right, here we go. Skyler Woodward breaking rack three. He's up 2-0 in our race to 11 semifinal. <laughs> nice, Dom. Says, I always win. Get sick of winning, though. <laughs> it's all right. Some people are sick of losing, so then they just turn to winning. Skyler just mentioning that after the break, he's supposed to have a longer set here, longer shot clock. And he makes the two ball kick. Is the cue ball going to agree with him? Sure it is. Sure it is. Shot there. Hey, it's really nice. And these players all 
made the trip to come out here and compete, doing what we love, and putting on a great show for all of the enthusiasts in the Boston area. And you know what a lovely event this has turned out to be. You now the McDermott Classic first, first annual, and uh, I gotta say, you know everything just kind of lines up with this event. It really is special, you know, being in the Boston area with McDermott and uh, St. Patrick's Day weekend. I mean, everything just kind of lines up for this to be something special. <laughs> Uh, Dominic Dunn, it's almost like he knows this table, no kidding. <laughs> I don't think uh, anybody's going to let anybody win anything. But My cue ball almost wrapping into the side pocket there. But it stays above ground. Skyler putting that nine ball away goes up three to zero here. Uh, Alex Bausch, yeah, you got to agree with that. Alex saying that uh, doesn't mean that he has to win since the semis and finals are new sets, but overall he's saying that Sky has had the highest overall form this weekend, and I agree with that. You know, he's looked the cleanest and and strongest uh, every single match. It seemed like it's been, uh, you know, a pretty strong performance. Again, the only match that, uh, that Skyler lost was uh, to Jonas uh, in an earlier round. So, you know, that's just letting you guys know how we've ended at this particular spot. Uh, Clay Belvoir asking what kind of balls are these being used. And these are uh, a set of Dynosphere balls. Uh, the Palladium set. Palladium Dynosphere set. And um, you know it's got something a lot of pool players are, are fond of. And that's a purple four ball in a green six. Imagine that. <laughs> Of all the colors that we've seen lately, it's uh, it's all the uh, original colors. How about that? Ryan Lynham, nice run this weekend, man. I know you came out swinging. He says, what a great weekend of pool skies, the man. That's right. It was a great weekend of pool B. Bowman, welcome back. Jeff Bertrand, welcome. Chris Gregory, how you doing, sir? And if you haven't hit that share button, please do it. Get it out there. I mean, if this event was going on and your friends didn't share it to you, you'd be like, man, you should tell me. I would have watched that. Gotta hit that share button. Steve Mack, welcome back. Skyler looking so flawless here. He really isn't letting up. Even the slightest bit. This is nine balls going to put him up four to zero in our race to 11. Fantastic play here from Skylar Woodward. And again, we see that exchange there. If Jonas wants to just go wash his hands or something, and it is only permissible if the opponent agrees to it. You know, he has to agree. The opponent says no, it's not happening. Yeah, 
Yeah, he did He did let him go. You know, he said, no, oh, man, you're not supposed to do that on my turn. And then he says, you know what, man, just go ahead and do it. Now, Skyler's going to take a couple of minutes to clear his head. So, that's how that's going to go. Yeah, Eric Hildy, he is on cruise control. That's exactly what's going on. Josh Reel says, trying to ice the kicker. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's that's possible that, uh, you know, Skyler may be uh, being a bit nice there. But I, perhaps that's that's his own mental saying, you know what, I can't tell him to wait. And then now I'm thinking, hey, should I have let the guy go or something like that? So he just said, you know what, go ahead and go. And I'm going to take my own break, too, so that's fine. I mean, most people agree that, you know, if something is in your mind, you got to get rid of it. Something that's distracting, whatever it is, just get rid of it. Yeah, Jesse Cameron says Jonas needed a Red Bull to stay awake. It's possible. Elaine Valerio says, what's up? What's going on? How's everything going? Make sure everybody's out there hitting that share button. It's a great time to do that. This is not the finals. This is the semifinals, Chris Hopkins. This is the semifinals, race to 11. Finals will be against Billy Thorpe, race to 13 following this matchup right here. Don't forget, if you have an opportunity to donate, we're going to be doing these live drawings on Tuesday night for all these fantastic prizes. And I'm sure... I'm sure we're going to throw in a couple of extras here as well. But that grand prize, the perimeter billiard light. And you can get a brand new set of these Dynasphere Palladium ball sets. You can get a brand new set for yourself. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we mentioned it earlier. Uh, it, they're not even available on the Dynasphere website. So these are definitely uh, somewhat of a rarity right now. And uh, you know, I, I have heard nothing but positive stuff from all of the folks playing this weekend. Uh, Brandon Arrow he says, isn't it like 1 a.m. on the East Coast? Yeah, it is. And he asks, why is it now just now towards the end? Well, I wouldn't think that it would be towards the end at the beginning of the day. So we're at towards the end of the night, and we're finishing up. We just got two matches left. And uh, we, we did have a lot of matches going the full distance, making it all the way to the 7-6 uh, or 9-8 uh, run. Yeah, you guys are talking about the stall stuff and, and all of that. Well, I'll tell you what. In my opinion, the uh, the pool gods always know what's going on and where everyone's intentions are. So, uh, you know, it may not show its uh, show its face right this second, but things work out. Things work out. Always does. Joey Chaplow going out on a limb saying he'll take Sky in this match. 
think uh, it's going to be tough to bet against him as he's up 4-0. But, hey, good luck to you. <laughs> Glad you got me there, Tom. <laughs> All right, Jonas. Looking to get his first point up here. Currently still at zero. Nine ball to the bottom right. Put Jonas down four to one. And he puts it away. Four to one now. Still in favor of Mr. Woodward. <laughs> oh, you guys are great. See uh see a couple of you guys uh saying some nice things here. Lineham, Mr. Ryan Lineham, the people's champ. He says anyone local that did not go to this event has no idea what they missed. Yeah, got to agree there. Even if you weren't able to play or you couldn't couldn't muster up the uh, the courage or the cash to get involved. I mean, you could come up with 35 bucks and grab yourself a seat and come watch some of the best players right in our neck of the woods. I mean, how do you not? How do you not do that? I mean, is there, uh, is there a chance that uh, he's going to go against Skyler in this match here? I mean, Jonas is uh, the one that dealt him his previous loss on a neighboring table. 9-7 was the score. Was a winner's side match, obviously, but 9-7, still a close match. Squeaked it out. I mean, is there a chance that someone's going to call Jonas to to win this one here? CTQ Man says, definitely a great event. He traveled over two hours and enjoyed every minute of it. Now he's home in bed enjoying every moment of it. That's right. I got you covered. Uh, yes, Casey Devine, there was. There was. It was done online. Yeah, Dominic Dunn, I agree. That's a that's a cool finals to have, Sky and Billy. That's a really cool finals to have. You know, and I can't even publicly say this, but I did want to mention something and I don't even know how much I can hint at this, but I, I gained a a, a one-of-a-kind piece of memorabilia today. And uh, I was told that I can have this and and I can keep it as long as I don't publicly show what I have. But uh, at the uh, at the Billiards Expo, Super Billiards Expo, uh, coming up next month, uh, I'm going to have it with me and anybody that stops by and visits uh, myself and uh, Mr. Elvis Rodriguez at the booth. You guys can have a peek at it. And uh, I'm going to leave you guys with that cliffhanger there. But you definitely want to come check this out. Got to see this. <laughs> Ryan McCrum knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> I can't say it, but boy, oh boy, it is a pretty awesome piece. <laughs> Yeah, Ryan Lineham. Yeah, there was action everywhere. Three cushion tables, the snooker table, 
pool tables, you name it, action everywhere. It really was a special weekend. And it's kind of nice to know where we're at right now. And oh, we're down to the final three players here. <laughs> Alex Bosch, no. That's not what I got. There's no way anybody would guess what I have, but it's uh, it's a special thing. Absolutely special. But I'll have it with us at the Super Billiards Expo with some other things, and you guys can uh, bid on it if you want. I kind of want to keep this one more than anything I've ever come in place with and come in contact with, but... Uh, Ashley might have the answer for you, Howard Fogg. You can ask Ashley in the chat there if uh, Sky will be playing in the Super Billiards Expo. Not really sure what exactly is going on. Uh, Kane Pedraza asking, where is the Super Billiards Expo? And it's in uh, Oaks, Pennsylvania. Oaks, Pennsylvania. And that's uh, coming up mid-April is when that's going down. And that will be there for the long haul. The uh, Wednesday warm-up is on April 12th. And all of the events will conclude on Sunday the 16th. So even if you can't make it there for the Wednesday, Thursday, uh, Friday time, I mean, come down at least one or two days on the weekend. There's still plenty of action to get involved in and, and different things going on. I mean, just take a walk through, go to some of the booths and experience the Super Billiards Expo. It's, uh, in the words of uh, my good friend, Mr. Jameson New, uh, the most inclusive building in pool. Uh, when you're there, you kind of, See exactly what I'm talking about. Now the uh, the finals is a race to 13, race to 13 in the finals. So whoever wins this one here is going to play Billy Thorpe, race to 13. And I don't believe it is a true double. It's just one race to 13. one race uh, Dominic Dunn yes yeah it's the uh, Palladium set they're not even on their website but we've got a whole pool room full of them right now it is the uh, the new Dynosphere Dominic Dunn, you know why you're going, because you're a pool player, man. If you're not obligated somewhere else, I mean, it's like, you're just like, eh, I guess I'll just go. Just have to. It's kind of how it goes. You know, you're in the pool community, and you know, you're just kind of sitting there about it. You ever been just, like, hanging out with your girl or, you know, just doing nothing with the boys, and somebody's like, hey, there's a pool tournament over at this place. It's like, oh, a pool tournament? Like, how do you say no? You're just like, all right, I'm in. I'm just going to go. It's so hard to say no. doesn't matter what format or anything. You're just like, wait, I can go play a pool tournament right now? It's so hard to say no. <laughs> so hard. Uh, Christopher Bevel, um, how do the Dynasphere stack up to Aramith? I mean, you're going to have to make that assessment on your own. I mean, we've had good success with this ball set. Uh, this weekend, everybody seems to like it, but you got to make that assessment on your own. Yeah, the uh, Northeast is pretty active right now as far as pool is concerned, and lots of cool stuff going on. Again, next week, 
over at Rex in Vernon, Connecticut. The Connecticut Valley Open. It's at Rex in Vernon, Connecticut. So uh, it's always a nice tournament there. And I know that that's a, a full field. I'll be there doing some broadcasting for you guys. Skyler's really got that break cooking right now. Boy, oh boy, is he going to get a look here. Four ball gets in the neighborhood, but it does look like he can still see the two ball square into the side pocket. And what a small side pocket it is, but I know he's, uh, he's more than comfortable in this situation. I'm not sure about any events in Illinois, Kane. Uh, not really sure what's going on out there. Yes, that's correct. Uh, Stephen asking where the room is. This is just outside of Boston. <laughs> Guys poking, poking fun at Skyler's glove here. <laughs> I mean, it seems to be doing the job very well, so. That was nice of you to call it Navy. <laughs> yeah, Tiny talking about the expo there. Yeah, you get amped up. You know, sometimes it's... uh. It's really just a positive vibe on your way there. You're know, just getting pumped to see people that you only see there once a once a year, and you know it's it's kind of crazy that it's already almost a year. You know we're coming up on the uh, the next Super Bowl. It feels like it was just you know like two months ago I was there, and Bing Bang Boom, here we are again. Doesn't seem like it was that long ago, but again, I'm excited to be there. Going to have a a home base there this year. Going to be over there doing some uh, some cool stuff with Mr. Elvis Rodriguez and in the box. It's going to be a nice thing. Excited for that. Make sure you guys come and say hey, say hello, and. Uh, if you're interested in some action, make sure you shoot a little message. I got some things cooking, got some plans in the pipeline. Definitely want to get on board there. Jeff James says he wishes they had the expo twice a year. Well, I don't think it would be as special if it was twice a year. I mean, there's other stuff like in other areas of the country and you know, I haven't experienced some of those other Billiards Expos or, you know, whatever you want to call it, Q Sport Expos or whatever. But uh, this is the one I go to and this is the one I enjoy. So, you know, I like it that it's once a year. It just makes makes you look forward to something and, you know, too much of a good thing isn't good either. So. <laughs> oh, Dominic. You know, you got you got a pass, man. That's fine. You got a pass. It's all right. So Skyler sitting at 7-1 here in our race to 11. And he's really not giving Jonas much room here. 
really isn't so I mean it's really looking like just like it's the Sky Woodward show from here on out folks I mean Jonas is going to need a mega opportunity and he's going to have to come with something very special Uh, yes. Yeah, they do, Dominic. And uh, we're hoping to do some more with that. We've been uh, household name and pool for quite some time. Talking about our title sponsor here, McDermott, of course. And again, we talked about how this event kind of just lined up beautifully with the uh, St. Patrick's Day weekend and McDermott being the sponsor and it being in Boston just everything everything came out really nice in that respect and uh, I think this uh, is going to turn into something quite special not that it isn't already but there's already talks of uh, improvements for next year and getting that cash up and so on and so forth so looking forward to those things Skyler really just killing it right now, man. It's like you, you'd be surprised if he missed a shot versus him making a tough shot. It's like, what do you mean he missed? He doesn't miss. What do you mean? And again, folks, really appreciate everybody that's been able to donate thus far. But if you haven't done so, please get on board and support these proper free pool streams. And you see those denominations on the bottom left there. We got a lot of cool things to give away. That perimeter billiard light, the arena light that we see above the table right here, above the Rasson at Amazing. It's the same one we're using here at the event. Also, a special set of these Dynasphere Palladium series. And that's what we're using here. It's all the same colors we've been looking at for many years. And uh, seem to be playing great. Also, that cool autographed Nine Ball World Rankings banner signed by some of the top talent here at the McDermott Classic. So right now, Skyler sitting at 8-1. to one. It's really just uncanny how he's able to dominate in a match like he is right there. Yeah, John Rogers, you said it. This guy's given uh, lessons mid-tournament. Hey, this is how you dominate here, folks. This is how you do it. Uh, first place here, 6,500, 6,500. And uh, on the side, another 26. So. Looking at the uh, first couple of open shots here. I mean, 
possible? Is it possible that Jonas comes with some kind of a comeback here from down 8-1 in a race to 11? That's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. I mean, Sky really has been just dominating the match so far and it's not really much you can say negatively about Jonas. It's just, it's been the Skylar Woodward show. It's no wonder he's a household name. Jonas picking up steam here. Guys, really, guys are really giving it their all here. Yeah, that was a good shot. <laughs> I see you guys trying to make uh, make some wagers here. I mean, Jonas is uh, going to break as soon as his hands move away. Jonas really just, come on, man, let me hit him. Let me hit him. So anxious to just smash that rack open. All right, and he's not going to get an open shot here. He's going to have maybe just the edge of the two ball here, but he may elect to push out. That's what he does here. And i got to be honest, though. I mean, the way Skyler's been shooting, I mean, what can you push where he's not going to do something with if there's something to do, <laughs> you know? It's just so tough. What a shot from Skyler Woodward, folks. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Really just been so solid here. and It's almost as if the, the longer he plays here on this table, the longer, you know, the, the stronger his game becomes and the more consistent he becomes. I mean... Dominic Dunn says, who is this Sky guy? Wow. Never heard of him, huh? with a jump and he's going to leave Skyler at least a piece of this ball and he leaves him the whole thing he's going to leave him the whole thing here Jonas just giving that quick look to his opponent there, saying, well, what you going to do? What's it going to be? Uh, Edward Hoffman asking, who is this Dominic Dunn guy? Oh, you can go on to his uh, Facebook page and maybe make a request, and then you can torment his life through social media, become a part of the uh, the fun pool circus.
a missed opportunity there from Skyler. And uh, really the first time these, these last couple of games that we've seen Jonas really doing anything at the table. I mean, he, it, it seems as though he's just been sitting for this entire match. You know, it's just been like Skyler shooting shots nonstop. And uh, Jonas comes out for, for air for a quick swing and a miss or a quick kick or something like that. And it's just been the Skyler Woodward show. And Jonas being the strong player that he is, you can't put it past him for him to uh, to battle back here. I mean, you know he always feels that he's a contender. Looking for the side there, but I think he's going to elect to go to the corner still. You can see he's super aggressive here. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, this is what it looks like if uh, if Jonas really wants to stay in this and uh, truly try to mount a comeback. I mean, he's drinking some some Red Bull there. Perhaps his wings will take him uh, to a uh, seven-game streak, eight-game streak. He's just so ready to go. One ball drops in the side. Straight in on the two ball. And we're starting to see some of the strength. That is Jonas Suto. Getting closer and closer to the conclusion of this event here. And uh, Jonas says, I'm not done fighting yet. I'm not done. And I'll tell you, Jonas has been, he's been fighting for quite some time. You know, making a name for himself and coming up through the ranks and performing at such an a high level, especially in the last, uh, I want to say the last year. And such power he has. And uh, I believe Jonas might be the youngest of our uh, final group here, our final eight. I think Jonas is the, the youngest of the group. I want to say he's, uh, I th I'm pretty sure he's 19, maybe. So, 19 or 20. Moritz, Moritz Newhouse and also in that range. And I mean, look at that. Look at that shot, man. Just firing him right in the heart of the pocket. Uh, 21, Clint Dixon says he's 21. Well, he might not be the youngest. I, I was uh, perhaps misinformed. Someone had mentioned earlier that he was younger than uh, some of these other guys. But, I mean, they're all pretty, uh, pretty young there. What a nice, what a nice out that was from Jonas Sudo. And, I mean, he's finally getting some air to breathe here. I mean, Skyler's literally just had the pillow over his opponent's face saying, you cannot see anything. I mean, he's, you know, Sky won, I think, seven games. Seven games in a row, something like that. And uh, Jonas is really just right now getting some space 
to run. Let's see how his break looks here. Oh boy. I mean that nine ball hanging right there in the side pocket. It's going to be tempting to make something happen here. I mean, he, he doesn't seem like he can uh, he can attack, really. Does he have a piece of this two ball? Is he really just going to kick at it right here? Oh, he's pushing out. I was going to say, that didn't seem... Uh, didn't seem realistic. is going to accept this here. And he played that pretty well. Nice control. Sitting proud in that chair. Still standing firm. Standing tall. Saying I'm not done just yet. and makes the contact. How's that two going to end? Almost trickles itself into the pocket, but it ends up hanging up there. Mr. Sudo coming to fire back now. Right now, 8-4 in favor of Mr. Woodward and Jonas on the on the attack right now. He's not he's not coming back. He's not coming back uh, thinking, hey, I got no shot here. I mean, I feel like Jonas was a little between ideas here. I really do feel like he was between ideas on that last shot there. He wasn't a hundred percent on what he was attempting there. It didn't look like a a reasonable miss there. He didn't he didn't really uh attempt a pocket there. And Skyler swinging and missing. Where's his cue ball ending up? Right back out in the open. So Mr. Sudo going to get another chance at completing this rack and bringing it to 8-5. Really? I mean, Jonas' game is so strong. And, you know, even with Skyler being who he is and, and where he's at, I mean, this is, uh, this is absolutely starting to feel like it's possible. Just the, uh, the pure firepower that we're seeing from Jonas right now and, and the speed, the rate of play, that's got to be intimidating to an opponent. I mean, perhaps not to Skyler, but...
boy is he shooting the ball straight. There's two shots away here. Going 8-5. Went from a seven-game deficit to a three-game deficit. Jonas says, hey, man, I'm not messing around. I'm not messing around at all here. Skyler says, hey, it's my turn for you to wait. <laughs> Now, all right, I want to see some odds here. Who thinks when these boys come back, Jonas breaks and scratches? <laughs> the same like Skyler did when, when Jonas asked the same question earlier. I mean, what are the chances on that? What are the chances that goes down? What are the chances? All right, I want to remind you folks about this awesome giveaway we're doing on Tuesday night is when we're going to do the drawings. But if you like what you're watching tonight and you want to see more of it for free, again, please donate. You see those options on your screen there? If you're not able to do it right this second, what you can do is you can screenshot your screen right now. And uh, you can take that information and Utilize that later. Get a little bit bigger for you guys. And uh, again, those are the options there. PayPal, Zelle, Venmo, and Cash App. Your choice there. And got those awesome prizes given away. The Perimeter Billiard Light is going to be sent to the grand prize winner. Also have the Dinosphere Palladium Ball Set, the autographed Nine Ball Vinyl Banner. And uh, that's autographed by some of the top talent that you've seen this weekend. Also the Amazing Billiards Official Jersey. Give away that stuff. And some other Amazing Billiards swag. And I'm sure uh, we'll come up with some other cool stuff to give you guys for supporting us. And Jonas is ready to go here we go wow thought it was going to happen there I think the world was questioning <laughs> what was going on here <laughs> Hunter Smutney says I'll step out of line and take 12 to 1 odds and say he scratches <laughs> oh boy oh boy it was close, but it didn't happen. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. I mean, not for nothing, he's actually looking pretty good from here. Ladies and gents, what are we thinking? Is it possible? Is it possible? That we go the distance in this match and we see like a 10-10 a rack. Is that possible? Unbelievable. Jonas looking like he's got another perfect run out coming at us right here, bringing it to 8-6. I mean, again, I mean, it didn't seem like this was uh, a possibility, but boy, with the strength that this kid has and the heart that he has to, to battle from down that many games, I mean, you got to give this kid credit. Got to give him some credit here, folks. Looking at 8-6 here. 
There it is, 8-6. Seven-game deficit to a two-game deficit. Oh, boy. Jonas Sudo tearing back into this match. You guys are looking for all kinds of crazy stuff. <laughs> you guys are having some fun in the chat, and that's all right. That's what it's all about, have some fun. Jonas has had this breakdown earlier on in the match. It didn't look like his uh, his break was gonna gonna hold up here, but he definitely figured it out, and and he's got this down pretty well now. He's been pretty consistent. One ball fires in there. Is he gonna get a nice open shot here? He's gonna have an opening. Not the greatest of looks, but he's definitely gonna be able to maintain control if he. He chooses so. Let's see what he elects to do here. He's thinking he's going to get his cue ball behind seven. Is that what he's intending here? And he's coming up with some kind of a plan here. He makes that. How's this cue ball? Not perfect, but I am I am impressed with that shot he just came with there. Even Skyler. Pretty much a full ball eclipse here with the nine between the three and the Q. And there you go. Luck is the residue of hard work. And Skyler says, hey, whatever, man. You don't like it? <laughs> Got to deal with it now, bro. Just kind of just going for his extension here. By extension, we mean the screw on type, not the time clock extension. Dennis in the chat says Sky is going to win this one 11 8. Yeah, I mean, you guys can, uh, you guys can, uh, claim whatever you want to claim here, but I mean, I'll just tell you, Jonas Sudo, coming from where he was in this match to where he is right now, I mean, if you don't think that's incredibly impressive, you're out of your minds. Absolutely out of your minds. 8-1 down. Now looking at an opportunity to possibly make it 8-7. I mean, that's... uh 
that's a true answer uh, to an assault. It comes out okay there. Just a little bit of good fortune, but I guess that's how it works. Now it's even. Now one good turn deserves another. Skyler says, do something with that, young man. It really is amazing the, uh, the way that Jonas confidently just goes at some of these tough situations. You know, he doesn't come out great here. Skyler now with an opening. Maybe a possibility to close the match out. But it's remarkable how how confident Jonas drops down to the ball and just shows he's absolutely fearless. Skyler played a nice one here. And all things considered, it looks like it's going to be 9-6 going into our next game. Was a bit short, but he should be okay. Nice control there. Just gonna let it go up nine six here. There it is. Anderson, how you doing, sir? <laughs> Mr. Bazinet says, 1.45 a.m. on a Sunday, 270 people, 260 people watching. Pool ain't dead, baby, but work is going to blow. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> yeah, there's, uh, there's also the broadcast on YouTube, and uh, I think we had another 150 or so over there. So, nice job, everybody. Nice job. Don't forget, getting closer and closer to the last chance for you guys to get involved here. And again, I told you, if you can't get it done tonight, I'll let it come in tomorrow. That's fine. But Tuesday, nothing going down there. we got to count up all the things and got to have that stuff available to us uh, on time. So if you do want to get involved... With those giveaways, make sure you get those donations in by tomorrow. Tomorrow night's okay. But again, uh, Tuesday, we're going to be doing that drawing. Like uh, it's beginning to come to the end here, but we've said that in the past, and look what uh, Jonas answered with. It's eight one. Next thing you know, it's eight six. Skyler squeaks out one game to get to nine. But I mean, boy, these balls are these boys are uh, holding tight. Not really giving many opportunities here. Showing some frustration there. Rightfully so. Another shot there. He ends up hanging it in the hole. Does not want. Does not want Jonas back at the table. 
That's the last time he got there. He lost uh, s s five games straight. That would be uh, that would be a loss if Jonas answers again with five games straight here. Yeah, I mean, Joey in the chat saying Sky is tired, but we're, we're really just making excuses for these players. They're both in the same position. They were here at the same time. They're same point in the event. I mean, they're both in the same situation, so preparedness is on the players. Yeah, good point, Mr. Bazinet. He's not tired. Bo is tired. I am tired. <laughs> it's like, I mean, I'm not even going to get into it. If you know, you know. If you don't, so what? <laughs> you guys are funny. Yeah, that's a that's a good point there uh, about Billy waiting uh, for these guys to play that final. And it would be a great idea for Billy to go hit some balls. If he isn't right now, he should be. It's getting closer to that time. Jonas now 9-7. It's two games. This guy was not happy about that. That previous previous game hanging that two ball in the corner. Mark White, how you doing, sir? He says, hi, from Thailand. Nice to hear from you, Mark. Hope all is well. Not really sure what you're doing out there, but I hope you're enjoying yourself. <laughs> Casey Devine says he's going to be blind tomorrow for staring at his computer for two days straight. Well, I know it's not always an option, Casey, but it would have been uh, a little easier on the eyes if you were able to make it to uh, Mason Billiards this weekend. I mean, I'm not going to tell you to make the trip at this point. There's uh, only uh, a match and a small piece after. It's definitely going to be taking a swing here. I totally thought he was going to swing there. Play the same situation with the cue ball, but take a stab at it anyway. But as few have mentioned, Skyler's kind of the king of the uh, kicking at a ball and making something good come out of nothing. So, see if he can live up to his name. How about that? <laughs> well, did he hit that well, or what do you think, folks? <laughs> I mean, he could have just given a ball in hand. He would have shot it the same way, perhaps with a slightly less favorable position. That was a spectacular shot. Uh, 
sorry, I missed that comment there. Uh, Joey Chaplow says, just curious who's commentating. This is Mike DeMarco from Ship the Cash. And uh, I'm glad you, if you're uh, if you're enjoying it, man. I'm I'm happy. Yeah, Matt. I have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you're absolutely right. <laughs> Little inside stuff there. My good friend, Mr. Bonarico, there in the chat. Skyler looking to get himself out of that corner, and it looks like he got there. That was tight. There wasn't a lot of meat on the rail to shoot there. You know, those types of shots, it's, you know, if the pockets are bigger, you can cheat it and get a little bit more favorable uh, position, but when the pockets are as small as they are here, it's not much to cheat. Gotta love that sound hitting the back of the pocket. Yeah, Sean Jones. Pretty pretty sporty indeed, that that Yona Pseudo character from Spain. I mean it's really tough to go against Skyler here though. I mean, he left just a small opening in this match, and Jonas ran with it. And he's mounted a great comeback here. Um, but Skyler's staying pretty steady, going strong still. And this will put him on the hill. That's a big, big... Back here. And there you go. Skyler Woodburn on the hill now. 10 7 over Jonas Suto. Ah, yeah, that's right, Mr. Mark White. He says, Oh, Mike DeMarco, the guy that gave me my first American commentating gig with Joey Ryan. And it was Sky Woodward, Billy Thorpe, Roberto Gomez, and Danny Olson. That's right. Absolutely, sir. I feel like we're forgetting a single player there. Oh, you know who else we're forgetting, Mark White? Uh, we're forgetting uh, Chris Reinhold. He was involved there, too. We had uh, we had Team Havoc versus Team USA. Those three guys were uh, Team USA at that current time Moscone Cup style. That's right, Mr. Mark White. seems a lot has passed since then. A lot of time has transpired. and you know, Poole is definitely uh, on the uprise, if you ask me. Yeah, Nick Bousquet, fair comment there. No matter who wins this, both players have respect and should hold their heads high. Totally agree. I mean, it's not every day that you get to put yourself in a world-class field and and find yourself in the top three. I mean, of course, you always want to strive to be better and go that one step further. Um you know, you're always looking to get that next step higher. But yeah, of course, should should definitely feel good about a finish here in the top three. Jessica Spear, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Uh-oh. Mom's in the chat. She says, let's go, son. Time to finish it. That's right. You tell him, Mama. Here you 
you would tell them. All right, just four shots remaining for Mr. Woodward in this matchup here. Extension called. <laughs> I hear you. As Woodward says, I've been here. I need to sleep, but just can't. I don't blame you. You see your you see your boy on on the screen, and you know he's out there doing something. You kind of just can't take your eyes off of it. How can you sleep? He's out here doing this, right? You got to keep your eyes glued to the screen. I understand. And with this final nine ball right here, Skyler Woodward gets the towel thrown in on him. And he still makes it. All right, fantastic event for Mr. Jonas Sudo. All right, stand by, folks. We're going to be back with one more amazing match. You guys got what you were looking for. The Billy Thorpe and Skyler Woodward final. All right, I'm going to leave our information right here on the screen for you. Please take this time to help us out, support this event, keep the free pool coming, and we'll be back with your final in just a moment. Don't go too far.
right after a little bit of stuff behind the scenes here i'm back with you and you're watching the sky woodward show which is a race to 13. billy thorpe the undefeated player watching skyler do what he does apologies you guys had to watch those first few games in silence i understand the struggle and uh, I know you didn't want to sit in silence, so I'm back with you. Apologies, ladies and gents. Chris Hopkins says, thank God the sound is back. <laughs> if you can't hear me now, your volume is off. Just saying. Oh, just making sure. Thank you guys for sticking it out. All you guys and gals out there. How about that, Bank? That was unreal. Right through the center of the pocket. <laughs> you guys are brutal. Yeah, so... John Francisco says, keep me awake, long drive. Yeah. I'm going to try for you. I'm going to try for you. So what are we thinking here? I mean, it's 4-0 to Skyler right now. Is there uh, is there any chance that we're going to see uh, Billy Thorpe uh, get involved in this match here? I mean, I know these guys are friendly, but I mean, would be nice. See a little bit more of a battle here. I mean, 5 0 to race to 13. This is tough. What are you guys thinking? What do you think? All right, here we go. You guys are making some predictions here. 13-3 to Sky, 13-6, 13-3. Yeah, Mike Sylvester says there's still a lot of pool left. And as true as that is, I mean, Billy's been in the hot seat, which is uh, ironically named the hot seat as he cools off, as our good friend in the chat said earlier. I mean, it is kind of... Uh, Kind of silly to think of the uh, the terminate, you know, the terminology that we got here. Ben Sutherland says thirteen to zero. No, I don't think we're going to see a zero. Billy makes a couple of balls. He's going to be like, you know what? Forget this. I'm just just going to win a few games here and do what I do. <laughs> Hunter Smutney says he'll bring the 12 to 1 odds out of retirement and take Billy to win. I mean, go ahead. Go ahead. See if anybody takes you up on that. Not likely, but it's a chance. I mean, I know you guys really wanted to see this as a final. There's a lot of you that really did. Hunter says, come get this free money. Go ahead. Somebody take it. Somebody take that action. See, what's the point of not taking it? 12 to 1. Go ahead. What's the problem here? Let's see an issue here. Let 
narrowly missing the bank there, hitting the point. He's going to leave Billy a uh, slice of the seven here. Just enough to pocket it. That shutout doesn't look like it's going to happen. Gets directly square on this nine ball. See if he can come with something here. Wipes its feet on the way in, but it does fall. It does fall. Zach Goldsmith, how you doing, sir? He says Mika snaps off Costa Rica. How about that? Fantastic. How about that? Congratulations, Mr. Eminen. Guys just having a little bit of fun. All right, here we go. Let's see how he's hitting this break here. One ball actually goes high there. And he's going to end up with a very easy opening shot here. Pretty close. They're just saying, hey, it's all gravy here, folks. And again, just want to remind you guys about our top finishers, if you haven't been following along. And uh, third place finisher in this one was Mr. Jonas Sudo from Spain. Fourth place was Moritz Neuhausen from Germany. And we had uh, Shane Wolford and Lucas Fricasso Werner in the fifth, sixth position. Raymond Linares and Sullivan Clark, seventh, eighth. And in the ninth through twelfth, Oscar Dominguez, Jeremy Sosi, uh, Jose Alberto Delgado, and Met Vergara. Those are your nine through twelve. And thirteen through sixteen, Michael Ogard, Max Eberly, Donnie Mills. And Hunter Lombardo, those are your top 16 players. Down to just two here. There's two players here. There's their undefeated Billy Thorpe. And Skylar Woodward tearing through the B-side after a earlier loss to Mr. Jonas Sudo. Yeah, Zach, totally, uh, totally agree with you there. Glad you and Upstate are having a fun time over there. He says in the middle of Meth Valley, Chattanooga. <laughs> oh, boy. It's a nice little change of pace, I would think. Where you guys can ch sit back and uh, and watch a broadcast versus delivering it. Guys are throwing out insane odds here. You guys are all crazy. That's why we love you. The pool family is nuts.
comes with a nice eight ball there. Bumps up above the nine. Looking good here. Just like that, we're at 5 2. Christopher House, I wish I could uh, relate to that. I don't know who that is. Never heard that before. But maybe I'll check into that. So continuing here, looks like Billy does have some life pumping in there. Zach Goldsmith agrees with that comment. So you guys are going to have to send me a link. Zach, send me something in a, in a Facebook messenger or something. You're going to have to let me know who the heck this is. This guy is, so I can do everything I can to not sound like him. <laughs> uh, Paco, the volume goes on and off because uh, when I'm not talking, there's no volume. And then when I'm talking, you can hear it. You know, it's, uh, it's just uh, an on-off there. Thank you, Zach. <laughs> I can't wait to hear it. Yeah, I just, uh, you know, sometimes I have to have a side conversation, Paco, and... Uh, you know that's not that's not stuff for the uh, for the stream. There on occasion we have to do some behind the scenes stuff. <laughs> Jeff, yeah, I know I know how it sounded, man. You got to remember, man. This is like no sleep, uh, in an, on adventures like this, and uh, you know today is no exception. <laughs> Jason Brown, thanks, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> Joey, Joey says, don't stop talking. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's that's usually the goal, to just continue talking. Uh, but again, on occasion, I got to I gotta turn the sound off on occasion and have these guys just, you know, I, ca I can't say certain things on, on, on live here. And, you know, sometimes there's particulars going on behind the scenes here. <laughs> you guys are brutal. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to I'm going to have to uh to look into that. You guys got me intrigued to say the least. Got to know all about this. But enough fun here. Brass tacks. We got Skylar Woodward at the table here. Doing what he does. I'll tell you, uh, you know, this is uh, oh, rubs the seven to make it happen, but hey, he gets there. Nine ball might ruin his party, though. Um, you know, it's it's kind of special. It's kind of special what's going on here. 
Um, and yeah, you're right. The uh, Josh Real mentioning that the uh, the broadcast may end soon, but um, to be honest, uh, it actually automatically will repost uh, a new a new broadcast. Uh, so again, make sure you guys like and follow the Amazing Billiards page. And you will not miss anything. <coughs> but uh, again, it will uh, it will automatically post that if we come to that point. Uh, Patrick, yeah, I agree with that. I mean, to be honest, we that was part of what we were just talking about. Um, you know about the the banter at the table. Uh, part of the event rules um you know there there isn't supposed to be any conversations uh during a match and uh although these guys are friends and uh you know they're having a good time they both made it to the final want to try to stay uh on the straight and narrow and make sure these guys are doing their best to adhere uh to some of the event rules so i mean it's really not supposed to be uh, you know, a way to do that. Uh, ben Sutherland, you know, th it's actually news to me, too. It's not really a Facebook thing. It's just the way that it's set up on the back end. Um, once it hits a certain point, um, it just uh, just reposts automatically, which is kind of cool. Yeah, Ben Sutherland, the same thing. Yeah, exactly. Normally, that's uh, that's the way it works. Yeah, it's a, it's a different type of uh, setup, and um, it's just the way it's set up. So, I think that's pretty cool that I can do that. So, Eugene Wickenbach, good night. Thank you for joining us. Good luck at work tomorrow <laughs> or today. If you want to slice it. I know you guys are uh I know you guys are sticking it out with us, trying to bear down and finish this with us together. I know it can be tough sometimes. Yeah, uh Ben, it's um you know, it's not done just exclusively through Wirecast. There's some browser stuff you gotta do. And uh Digital Pool is definitely involved, I think Zach knows uh knows some of that stuff as well. I think it's uh sent to an RTMP digital pool. <laughs> Zach Goldsmith says this game will be over in fifty two minutes. That's possible. It's possible. Joey says, is Earl still in the tournament? Earl who? There's two people left. <laughs> I can't tell if you're trying to be a troll or being honest here. But no, Earl is not in the tournament. These are the final two players here. <laughs> no. Pearl is not in the event, my man. He didn't come out and play. <laughs> Zach, how do you not answer it that way? <laughs> oh, boy, Ben, that's classic right there. He says Earl's outside giving huds in the parking lot. But only to those who ask if it's okay. I mean, that, that was a funny situation there. Uh, but, I mean, come on. You can't expect everybody to just be like, yeah, sure, bring it in, partner. Thanks for beating me. Uh. <laughs> I'm not going to finish that one, but. <laughs> it's fine.
Everybody's starting to get delusional in the pool room. This is the time. Yeah, Zach, looking forward to it as well. I got some uh, some cool stuff. Me and Mr. Rodriguez are going to set up shop over there. I'm going to do an in-the-box ship-to-cash co-op. Should be a good time. Make sure you guys come check us out over there. Going to be there uh, for the long haul. Where's the cue ball? It's going to stay on the table, but not going to offer too much. I think Skyler's going to end up jumping here. I don't think you really push out here. I think Skyler's got enough coverage here where he can bank and make something good come out here. Maybe uh, jump to the two rail, bank on the two ball. Keep the cue ball down here under the 6-3. It looks like he's going to push out and just leave that tough shot there. Give Billy an opportunity to shoot at least. Looks like Billy might actually take this on. This guy's like, huh, I can't believe he's shooting this as he sips his drink there. Yeah, nice, nice shot there from Billy Thorpe. Don't believe there's uh, too many strong options here, but Sky's up 6-3 here. Still plenty of pool to play, but um, I, st I do think that he's still going to be trying to put his best foot forward. What's the nine ball? So here we go. This guy making nice contact there, but doesn't really get any reward for the hit there. Looks like Billy is going to take this on. Fires it right in the hole. That's where we say pow, right in the kisser. Billy's made some great bank shots on this table. Some of his previous matches. Billy showing us that uh, maybe there is a match here. I know some of you folks were insinuating that uh, this is just going to be the Sky Woodward finale. Well, Billy's firing here. And despite that, Skyler had a nice lead right off the bat. You have to know, you know, as a pool player, once you once you get that vibe, you're like, hey, I'm firing the balls here. You kind of don't want to stop. You just want to keep going. Slightly overrun there. Let's see if we can make this one here. No problem at all. A few balls fine. But we knew it was going to be a possibility to possibly go to that... Uh, Side pocket scratch, but doesn't happen. So we continue here. It's going to be 6 4 here. <coughs> and you see that big smile on Billy's face. These guys are having fun, having a good time. They made it to the end, and they're happy to be here. Here we go. Rack number 11. Billy's down 6-4 in our race to 13. Let's see what we got here.
Yeah, Patrick Keys, you could say you could take away someone's early nine balls, but, I mean, that's part of nine ball. So, I mean, if you take away a couple of these uh, players, uh, you know, golden breaks, a couple of nine ball breaks, yes, that does count in the, in the event. Take away a couple of those those golden breaks, and players might not have even continued in the event. They might have not been uh, the winner in their match. We saw earlier... Skyler breaks the nine ball uh, to beat Moritz Neuhausen. I mean, th these guys are playing the match out. It might be uh, slightly lax because of their, uh, you know, their close uh, friendship. But, I mean, they're playing the match out. That's what they're supposed to do. Pete Bowman back in the room. Dave Morganelli, thanks for all your help this weekend. You did a great job. Thank you. Just going to send the cue ball for a little bit of a trip here. Up and down the elevator. Arrives right back. Perfect shape here. Probably really looking strong right now. Looking like he might just walk away with this right now. Billy is the undefeated player here, so, you know, no surprise that he's still shooting pretty well. Yeah, that's right, Chris Morton. Billy's coming back saying he's got a chance to win also. Absolutely. Absolutely. to break. This is rack 12. He's down 6-5. It's going to be a dry break. Skyler coming to the table. Looking, looking okay here. He's got enough to work with. Hope you guys have uh, enjoyed the weekend. Tried our best to uh, deliver some good pool, good coverage. Hopefully enjoyed some quality pool. Starting to look like he's uh, finished messing around. He's like, you know what, man? I'm tired. I want to get out of here. And uh, maybe he just wants to make it happen. Four ball up. We're going to have another opportunity here. Oh. 
Uh, Joey Chaplow asking about the first prize. Um, it is, I believe, 6,500. 6,500 here. But uh, if you want to see all of the information there, you can go to uh, digitalpool.net forward slash amazing. I mean, out of the uh, you know top 16 players, uh, paid out 30,000. Not terrible. Joey says that's a lot of work for 6,500. I know it's a whole two days of playing pool. Oh no, not that! <laughs> Come on, man. You guys are crazy. I get it. You're going to compare it to golf or something? I mean, I get it. I mean, if you guys don't have positive things to say here, I mean, why are you even talking? I mean, we get it. We know the situations. I mean, perhaps if we had some positive feedback and positive support... And the people that are watching, I mean, obviously, if you're watching pool, you like Q Sports. Maybe some positive uh, feedback and positive impact might uh, put us in a different predicament. I mean, things things in life, you know, they come in waves, and. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I'm starting to feel like there's uh, some positive waves coming to our pool community, our pool world. There's a lot of good things on the horizon. I see things going in a positive direction and uh, I mean there's, there's really just a lot of good things happening right now. You know, it's in, you know, Goldie, if you're still there, you know, it's a, uh, it's definitely a collective team effort to try to make things go in the direction we hope for it to go in. And, uh, you know, there's a whole bunch of uh, soldiers out there just working endless hours and doing these things for pool. And it really is, uh, really is tough. You know, it's tough stuff. You know, but we're all out here in the trenches doing some stuff, trying to get us into a better position. And you know, if you're not uh, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. So that's how I feel about it. So there's a uh, TV channel I noticed on uh, cable television. It was uh, NXT, and they've been showing some professional pool on there. So make sure you guys check that out. I did notice that in the last year or so. That was through uh, Verizon service. I don't know if it's uh, you know universal and goes to all of the cable channels, but... I think it was called NXT. Just see if your uh, cable provider has that, but it was just part of the cable cable lineup. You know, it's right next to like you know the CW or Fox or something like that. It was right there in the mix with everything. That was kind of cool to see. Flipping through the channels one night, and I'm like, I know those guys. <laughs> what am I watching? Billy taking the lead for the first time here. Ben Sutherland, great call. I mean, 
there's uh there's quite a bit of uh momentum on Billy's side right now. As Skyler was roaring at the beginning. And uh I told you if if you're a pool player and you get that taste of run out, it's really hard to lay off of it. It's like I don't care what situation you're in, you get that taste of run out, you just want to do more and more of it. It's addicting. It's like, hey, I just I just ran out on this guy. I might want to do that again. <laughs> and I think that's uh, exactly what happened. You know, Sky was playing super strong on Billy, and this guy left him an opening, and he said, you know what? Maybe I'll win. Take a seat, buddy. Maybe I'll do it. How's this cue ball going to end up here? Not too shabby. <laughs> yeah, this has definitely been a great weekend for pool, especially for us here in the Northeast. You know, high caliber players putting on a great show. Lots of moving parts this weekend, but boy, oh boy, was it a success. I think everybody enjoyed themselves. And uh, the folks that were able to come out in person, some of those uh, people, this was their first time being able to see, you know, professional pool up close and personal. You know, it's been quite a while since we've had uh, some of these boys in our area. Skyler kind of bewildered. He's like, what am I going to do here? There's only so many options here, sir. I'm sure he's going to come up with something. A little bit of a stretch. this one here. I mean we've seen uh we've seen Skyler play some pretty sick kick shots. Billy answers with a pretty decent one of his own. This three ball passes he's just gonna shoot it outright. If it does not pass not sure what the plan's gonna be, but it does look like it does go by the nine ball. Josh Real in the chat says anyone still offering 12 to 1. That was uh, Mr. Hunter Smutney was the guy you were looking for. And I don't believe he's offering that any longer. But who knows? He might be out there. That's right, Mark White. Absolutely. Uh, Hunter, yeah. I think that's what he meant. If he didn't mean that, then uh, I don't. I don't really know what he's looking for. <laughs> Thanks, Joey. Appreciate it, brother. Zing sends the cue ball all the way up to the top rail. A little straight here. You can tell by Skyler's body language he's not thrilled about it. He's going to kind of have to just deal with it, though. with 
at that relatively well. Doesn't want to get stuck behind the nine, but he does. Not cool. Not cool. See Mr. Powers sleepwalking there. He really did bust his butt for the last seven weeks. Skyler says, that's okay. You don't have to shoot the rest of those. And he allows Billy to go up 8-6 from there. Uh, Joey, yeah, I mean, I'm not necessarily a pool player uh, in that sense. I mean, I get out and play events when I can, but there's there's a lot of uh, backstory to how I arrived in my position here and uh, involves a lot of explanation and whatnot. I mean, I got a very uh, large spot in my heart for, for the game of pool. And, you know, a couple years back I told uh, some of that story. I was invited to do some... Speaking up at the spot in New York, they had the players brawl. And Tony Robles invited me up there to be a part of that. I thank him for that. And uh, they had me come up there and as a guest player and guest speaker. So I played with, uh, they, had, uh, they had a bunch of uh, pro pool players teamed up with um, MMA fighters. And it was the players brawl. They were raising money. And the event was for Crohn's disease and pancreatic cancer. And uh, you know, I got to tell a lot of that story there. But basically, pool was there for me in a lot of ways uh, when I needed something. And that community and the game itself was really special to me. And kind of kind of got me through some tough spots when I dealt with some things. And, uh, you know, I do feel somewhat obligated to the community itself, and I kind of fell in love with it. But as a player, you know, the reason why I ended up on the other side of the tournament charts and on the other side of the stream booth is really just because, you know, nobody was really doing anything in my area that felt productive. And, you know, you offer your advice. Hey, you know, the players, you know, we, we all feel like this. Can you try this? And hey, can, can you try doing a tournament like that? And you always get hit with the stone wall, and it's like, you know what? Just do it myself. So I put the cues aside and grabbed a mic and a laptop and a, <laughs> and a clipboard, and, you know, just went at it, and here we are uh, many years later, and I think we've come quite a long way. But that's the short version But yeah, I've been uh, been around pool for quite some time, and I got a very special spot in my heart for pool and and the community and the the good, the bad, the ugly, the disturbing, the lunacy. I mean, all of it. I just love it. How's that nine ball looking? Almost, almost, Mr. Thorpe. Skyler's like, come on, dude. How are you going to leave me stuck on this nine ball like that? That's not cool. That's not cool. I thought we were friends. Thanks, Joe. I appreciate that. Yeah, if you guys want to... Uh, Follow me and my endeavors. You can uh, obviously just go to my personal Facebook page, just Mike DeMarco on Facebook. You'll see me there. Or you can go to the website, shiptocash.com. Or you can go to our page also, Ship the Cash on Facebook. Somebody's out there if you want to just throw a link in there for me. Appreciate it.
Appreciate you, Hunter. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate that. Apparently people are bowling in the background over here. <laughs> We've uh, already discussed uh, some of that stuff, boys and girls. Thanks, Tassin, for posting that for me. But, uh, yeah, Mark White. Um, we uh, gave Mark White his uh, first gig in America, in American Pool, according to him earlier. And uh, we did some work during the pandemic shutdowns. I was the guy doing the virtual pool events. I don't know if you guys saw those things, but a lot of other pool entities ran with it after we kicked that off. We we're having players competing from home and all that, so if you guys are unfamiliar with me, you can, again, just go to the website, shipthecash.com. You can read about some of that stuff, see what we got cooking. Thanks, Clint Dixon, for posting that as well. Appreciate it. Our Billy Thorpe has really turned this match into the Billy Thorpe show. And earlier, Skylar Woodward was looking like it was just all him. I mean, but I mean, it's kind of just the way that it's been. You know, it looks like the player that was on the table previously is going to hold serve. They got comfortable right off the bat, and next thing you know, the, the other player gets comfortable as well, and they kind of walk away with the match, so. There you go, Billy Thorpe, 9-6 now. Don't forget, this is a race to 13. I mean, what are you guys thinking here? Is Billy going to walk away with this? Is Guy just going to let him, let him go? I mean, is he is he going to fight back as hard as possible, or is Skyler going to, you know, Hulk out and tear him a new one? I mean, how's this going to go? Curious what you guys are thinking. I mean, I know what I think. But I don't want to give you my prediction just yet. I want to see what you guys are thinking. Robert McKeever, welcome back. Mark White, tell him. You know you didn't. You didn't take me for no 15000 I think he already said he was joking, but... Uh, Deanna Copeland, it's because the tournament has not finished yet. <laughs> I mean, that's the only answer I can give you. Sorry about that. <laughs> this is the final, and that's what it is. I mean, the irony of it is if we were uh, on the West Coast and it was this exact same time, would it be a question? You know, these guys are traveling the globe. It's all the same. Clint Dixon says Billy's on fire. Vinny says Sky wins. Joey says he's thinking they're splitting it. I mean, I'm not sure what kind of things that these players are talking about personally, but I mean, these guys are playing to win here. Nobody wants to lose. Who the heck wants to lose?
Yes, Christian, this is the uh, this is the final. Clint Dixon, I'm not really sure if uh, Jeremy's watching. I don't think he is. Um, hopefully, he's getting some rest when uh, when he doesn't have to be up and about. I'm hoping he's getting rest. I know he works hard too. Well, Billy Thorpe now at 10-6. Chris Feeman, you're still out and about, man. What's going on? He says Skyler is out on his feet. Billy is fully fresh and ready to go. I mean, look at these. Look at these shots coming from Billy Thorpe, man. Banks the ball in so clean. You know, someone had mentioned this earlier, and uh, it, it really feels as though Billy is, is a different version of Billy that I'm used to seeing anyway, and some of the folks watching earlier had mentioned the same thing, same observation. But he just has this certain spark to his demeanor and, and how he's been going about his tournament this weekend. Yeah, Matt Strauss, that's right. 10-1 to 1 for Billy after the fifth rack. Big turnaround. Here we go. Billy definitely comfortable here. We're testing a couple of theories here as well. And let's see. Yeah. Falls perfectly on the eight ball. No issues here. Gonna put him out at eleven. Yeah, Tossin, you 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 got that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you guys are definitely understanding what's going on. They can agree to to split money, but they have to they have to play the tournament. They have to. They can't just not play pool. It's against the rules. And they're not gonna uh they're not gonna mess with that stuff. Yeah, I gotta agree it looks like uh Billy's gonna walk away with this one. Looking pretty solid. And he does make a ball here. Doesn't appear that he has a clear shot at this one ball. Yeah, yeah, you're right. They, there's no, uh, there's no splits going on because of the ranking points. That's right. I'll leave him an opportunity. Sends it to the opposite end here. Not terrible. I mean, Billy's got such a such a big lead here. And we did see. Wow, what a shot there from Billy Thorpe! You gonna fake that one? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> what a shot there! But I mean, you know, Billy's way out ahead here. 
Uh, but we did see earlier Skyler had uh, Jonas Sudo in the same type of situation, and and Jonas he he made a pretty good run to try to come back there, and it was very impressive. You know, so I mean, all things considered, you know, the the cold guy heated up, and I mean, Billy has been undefeated throughout the tournament. It's just, uh, it's just the way it is, man. Sometimes it's your time to win. And sometimes it's your time to lose. And right now it's looking like Billy Thorpe is next in line for a W. Be honest, though. I mean, he he really has played solid all weekend. Every time he's played a match, it's like, who is this refreshed, clean-stroking Billy Thorpe on the attack? Look how clean he's hitting the ball, playing so strong. There you go. Billy, one step closer. Now sitting at 12, he's on the hill. Yeah, Skyler, I agree with you there. It's really nice to see that Billy's nine ball is really up to speed again and you know, he really is just playing strong. And here we go, Billy Thorpe to break here. This is rack number 19. And he is on the hill, one nine ball away from victory. One ball goes square into the side. He's going to get hit with a sandwich. That 8-9 just sending that cue ball right behind the 8 making things a little more complicated. Give you a few angles of this here. Goes with a push. All right, what do you think? Skyler runs this table in five more. <laughs> we see a double hill rack. And then uh, Skyler breaks the nine <laughs> on the hill. <laughs> Imagine that. Ends up hitting the point there. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it just, the way pool is, is set, it's just, hey, it's your time. It's your turn to win. This guy was going to try to come with as much as he can here. Nice open table though. Perhaps he can pick up some speed. I would appreciate it if we just uh, kind of laid off that subject for the remainder. I mean, just enjoy the shots that we're watching. Enjoy the match. 
And, uh, you know, we've kind of beat that subject to death. If we can just move on forward, that would be great. Appreciate that. Nice shot there from Skyler. Where's that cue ball going to end up? Still manageable here. He's okay. How beautiful would it be if we see Skyler really just tear back and and win another this game in another five? How good would that be? Put him in bed, Skyler. Shot. A little wonky there. You know, you can tell in the body language of Skyler right now that he's he's definitely feeling the uh, the fatigue from the event this weekend. You know, that's not the same. That's not the same. Uh, you know, swagger that he's had, and that pep in his step that he's had throughout the, the tournament. Mitch Wilson, you're welcome. Glad you enjoyed yourself. I wish I had some additional energy myself as uh, I get to the wee hours of the morning. I've been here, uh, been here since Thursday. Oh no, scratch on the break. This could be, this could be our final rack here, folks. Uh, you can see, you can see Skyler just showing a little bit of, uh, you know, disappointment. But yeah, I'm I'm, uh, I'm feeling the effects too, and these guys have been playing pool. I mean, you can see it in the body language of Skyler there. These guys uh, have been playing nonstop. Even even just the waiting at an event like this, sometimes you got to wait for a bit. control there. What a shot. This guy's like, come on, man. This is what you're giving me. My brain's starting to uh, let up a little bit. Oh, no. Scratching in the side pocket. I want to say about an hour ago. Skyler kicks that, and he makes something, possibly even the nine ball. Oh, he is on two. He is on two. Skyler is on two fouls. Imagine that. Is there a chance that Billy plays a defensive shot on his next shot? I, mean, I guess there's a chance. Seven ball. A little tight on the eight ball. He wants to do it. He can do it right now. Bank the five ball up and freeze on the back of the eight. Oh, he's totally doing it. How can you miss this kind of opportunity? Oh, and he still gets it stuck there. I can't believe it. He tells him he's on two fouls. I can't believe it. This could 
be the last stroke of our tournament here. Kicks it and almost makes it. Oh, no, where's the cue ball? Oh, my God. Can you believe it, folks? That's how that's going to go. I can't believe that. He three fouls him to win the tournament. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. All right, ladies and gents, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate that. And uh, again, don't forget, we're going to be doing the drawing for these prizes right here. Come Tuesday night. So, again, you can uh, can help us keep on delivering free pool at a high level. And we're going to send out some of these awesome prizes to you. All right, thanks again. Uh, this has been a great time hanging with you guys and gals all weekend. Uh, I am Mike DeMarco from Ship to Cash. I thank you for joining me. I love you all, and I'll see you next time on the live stream.